You're listening to Sideshow Network. Hey, hi, how are you? I'm Jamie Flam, and I'm the artistic director of the Hollywood Improv. Basically, that means I'm the one responsible for booking comedians, producing shows, and making sure every night at the club is magical. You might even call me the gatekeeper. Okay, so not really, but maybe, I don't know. Uh, Outside of my job at the Improv, I also perform and write comedy, which means I sit in front of many gatekeepers myself. It's an interesting dynamic, but it's helped me learn a lot as well. Now I host a podcast about it. Each week, I talk with bookers, producers, decision makers, performers, and more. Hey, uh, this is Cole Stratton. This is Janet Varney. This is Troy Conrad. This is Todd Glass, and you're listening to Gatekeeper. It's an inside look at the art of saying yes and no. Also, there are sound effects. Be sure to subscribe to Gatekeeper on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And you can find more info at sideshownetwork.tv. And welcome to another episode of Worst Collection Ever here on the Sideshow Network. This is the show where we tell you about the worst comic book collection in existence. And it just happens to belong to us. I'm Jen. I'm Sean. Once again, we're besieged by cats. Well, just one cat. Just one. Every time we start the podcast, she comes out hiding. Well, you know. I feel like she knows. Come here, sweetie. She's had a busy day. My busy day, she ran out of the bed when I vacuumed, and now she's out. Yeah, well, that that's her thing. That's her thing. That's her thing. <laughs> so she's back. Hi, babe. Tonight on right, a very well, special worst collection ever. We talk to a cat. We Isn't it exciting? Cat. It's kind of like all of our shows. <laughs> <laughs> but I we, just feel that's why that's why I feel, that's why I feel okay about doing a podcast like this because you know it's just like I'm all talking to one big cat. <laughs> like the internet's one big cat, and I'm just talking fair enough. To it. The internet is made of cats, as we all know. Like, do you realize that every week we do this, we put this out there to the entire world, and like four people listen to it, and they're no. all cats. Well, maybe they people listen to it with cats, but do they listen to it with cats? That's so exciting. But we put it out there to the entire or corgis, yeah, people, or dogs. I also love dogs. People have dogs and cats and lizards. And yeah, birds. lizards are cool too. Birds also. I'm a big animal lover in general. I, I even like she, bees. Mm-hmm. Big bee fan. I don't know if anybody out there is a beekeeper. That's oh my god, that'd be so cool. If you are a beekeeper, oh, like a legit beekeeper. Please, Omg, that's you know, so exciting please, to me. Uh, I wish I was a beekeeper. Please I- tweet. <laughs> At Angry yes. Girl Sean or uh, at, at Jen. Jen Stansfield. Let me know about what it's like to keep bees. I would love to keep bees. Yeah. I really up. would. Like, if we ever move to the middle of nowhere, which, you know, we talk about every once in a while when we get tired of traffic, uh, I really do want to have bees. I, I want to keep bees and learn how to do things with bees and bees. Know, harvest honey. I don't know. What do you <gasps> do with bees? Wolf. But yeah. Bees. Well, <laughs> No, I, I agree. I but, think. But yesterday, uh, we were not in the middle of nowhere. We were in Santa Monica. Yeah. So basically, we had a. The, there was a. Uh, our, one of our favorite stores, Heidi Ho Comics in Santa Monica, was like, hey, we're having a sale. But they were doing like a trade sale, and it was just like, oh, it's trades. And I'm like, oh, cool. I'm probably not going to find anything. I'm just going to go in and look. Well, the trades that they have there, this is, this is saying, this is just, you know, it's. The just, ones that were on sale. The stuff that they're selling. They have, you know, they have it, it your just wasn't treats, for us. But it wasn't. It was just like you know, a lot of books, a lot of, a lot of like, really old magazines. Yeah, they had a lot of that, which was fine. And which is it's a, that, that stuff. That's good collector stuff, but it's something that it just wasn't for us. Uh, yeah, it's the stuff that like I don't, you know, I can't have more of. Right. Had they had wrestling magazines, oh, I probably would have t- taken them up on a few of those. Well, no. See, what happened is I'm like, oh, I'm probably not going to get any of this stuff because, you know, it's a bunch of old books and I already have so many damn books that I continue to buy. Um, so I was like, eh. But I was like, I'm not really going to buy anything. This is exciting. And then there's this huge fucking table just full of 50 cent comics yeah an entire card table with these really nice wooden boxes and on the side spray pen spray painted 50 cents and i was like god damn it yeah and they had some really good shit in there well here's the this is that's the thing too because like you want like like i'll like i'll check out a dollar comic box but i know that like you know it's it's you know it's a bit more of an investment you know so i'm like i don't have to you know go as crazy 
Oh no, fifty cents. Fuck it. But fifty cents is usually. I mean, twenty five cents. Fuck it. Forget it. Yeah. Well, we've run into those. That that, and that, that that'll happen. That'll happen oh, sometimes. Yeah. You'll go. You know, you'll go to the you know conventions or whatever, and there's a dude doing twenty five cents. Just because he's trying to get rid of his shit. Trying to unload this stuff, and it's like, fuck yeah. Yeah. Well, That's, we ran into that. I think at what Pasadena Comic Con, that guy was just no, like no, no, twenty five cents. Uh, no, it was Pasadena. That guy was there. Pasadena. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. I was thinking Palm Springs. That guy's been there before. I. We feel we ran into him at Kamikaze. Yeah. Yeah, same guy. Yeah. No, he might, you know, maybe he'll be there this year, too. No shit. So, but so we had we had some good stuff. So actually, it was a pretty good haul for the show, good haul for our collections. Mm. I was pretty, I was pretty happy with that. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so we got some good stuff for this week and uh, hopefully for the coming shows. Um, this week in particular, we're going to do our DC book, which is... Uh, Karate Kid, huh. number fourteen. Now, this is not anything to do with the movies. Uh, Karate Kid number fourteen came out in uh, May June nineteen seventy eight. So, no Ralph Macho here. Ralph Ralph was still on. wasn't even on Joni Los Chachi yet. Huh. You know that's how, that's how far back we're going here. But, um. Yeah, this is the the Legion of Superheroes character, Karate Kid, from, uh, you know, he says his name. I don't know anything about him other than the fact that he's basically uh, a poor man's Iron Fist. Pretty much. And yeah. he actually kind of has a similar costume. Yeah, he has a very similar costume, like with the, with the flared out thing on his neck, yeah. you know, like Iron Fist kind of does. But, uh, but, yeah, so here he is on... On this uh, on this cover of this book, he had a, he had a series uh-huh. in uh, in the in the late seventies. He's also a member of the Legion. He's a member of the Legion, but this is the lead. They would like do this occasionally, where the Legion would show up in the twentieth century, and they'd be like, "Oh, what are we doing?" But he was one of the yeah, he was one of the guys who apparently, the, out of all the Legion characters, he was one of the guys early on who they decide outside of like Superboy to give like his own series to. Yeah, you know, like because there's been you know Cosmic Boy, um, Valor, Meh. you know, there's been you know number of characters. I'm, I'm probably forgetting a few bigger ones, but sure. Um, but yeah, they decided to give him probably because this is the late seventies and everybody was kung fu fighting. Mm, yes, so they sure were. So you know those kicks are coming fast as lightning, and you know of course <laughs> you know DC Comics always on the the pulse. Of, oh yes, absolutely. As, as evidenced by future things, you see, like Superboy's from the '90s, you know, and his earrings and his. I don't want to talk about Superboy. He, he upsets me. <laughs> but uh, so on this cover, we I have. I just can't stand the way Superboy looks. Yeah. I really can't. That like '90s Superboy with the stupid shaved head yeah. and his dumb circle glasses. I want to punch that guy in the face. I hypothesized this morning about how. It was, they were, what were they watching? Oh, like MTV or something. They were watching MTV and they saw, uh, somebody Somebody was watching a, an Oasis video in 1995. And we're like, and champagne like, soup. Yeah. Out. Actually, no, it would have been before that. It would have had to have been. been before that. But she, Oasis was, you know, you know, You know what would be that. worse is if Noel Gallagher uh, saw those on Superboy and he was like, oh, I remember those were cool. And then he started wearing them. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. even worse. So and DC, then he punched his brother in the face. So DC, DC, and then his brother trends. kicked him in the nuts, and and then they just had a brawl. Because I think they hate each other still. They always hate each other, but you know what? Oasis is a good band. No, I mean they definitely had some musical talent. Just they imploded because they're assholes and they couldn't work together or with anyone else. No, but they still put out stuff. I think they just put out an album. Like yeah, but then the they past, like get like, back year. together. They put out an album and they broke up like immediately afterward, didn't yeah. they? I guess. Yeah. I want to listen to Oasis now. Well, all like, right. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that later tonight when I'm playing my game. Yeah, put it on Spotify. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyways, Karate Kid, number 14, from June 1978, I said, right? Yeah. So uh, so on the cover, we got Karate Kid. And Robin and when he Robin, wore panties. Robin, good old Dick Grayson in his underwears. Yeah, that's right, when he was very bare-legged. Yeah, and he's out here. He's getting throttled by... Diamond Death? Is that how you say that? Sure. Diamond Death? Diamond Death? Diamond Death. Diamond Death. Diamond Death. Diamond Death. Diamond Death. 
It's uh, just like a big crystal lady, but she's actually cri- made of diamonds. She's a crystal lady made out of diamonds, and she's like, and it says, Diamond is forever. Sure. <laughs> whatever. And uh, Karate Boy, Karate Kid. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> whatever. Uh, is that He's thinking, if I strike, I'll shatter Iris into a million pieces, but if I don't, Robin dies. And this just means that this guy is dumb. Because he doesn't know how diamonds work. Because he doesn't know that diamonds are one of the hardest. Nobody knows how diamonds fucking work. Man. Like, Nobody okay. has any idea how yeah, fucking diamonds work. Stupid foot's gonna break it. All right, that's cool. So, uh, yeah, Karate Kid, Diamond Death is Forever. Uh, what's his name here? Do I get his? Do I even get his? Val or something, right? Yeah, but Saint Chris. Yeah, you yeah, you even have like a little like Marvel kind of blurb at the top here. Yeah. Real quick, did you ever read this ad? No. So basically, is it for shoes? It's for shoes, but basically, it's about this kid. So who's this? There's like this. Okay, so real quick, there's this ad on the inside cover here. It's for AAU shoes. Is that a devil? Well, it looks like Doctor Demonicus mm-hmm. from uh, West Coast Avengers. Um, and basically, there's a kid in the hospital. He's bed. a kid in the hospital, and the mother. He's like, look, this Doctor Demonicus is jumping out of a window, and he's like, hey, who gives a shit about this kid? I'm the sinister soul. <laughs> okay. S O L E. Oh yes. And he has the 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 magic potion that will help s- save this kid. Okay. And he's like, "Fuck you." And oh, I just realized something here. So the guy, so this guy in this thing, uh-huh. he's the A A A A A U superstar. Superstar. I hate everything. And he uh, he's like, "Ha ha! Well, I got this thing, and I'm gonna use uh, this medicine." That would save this boy to bring the world to its knees, and uh, the okay. man with shoes can't save me. And then the guy with the shoes runs into this hospital room, which apparently this poor kid's got some shit going on. Yeah, in, in his life, his family, this poor woman is not, not, who's not even freaking out. She's just like, hmm. she's like, this happens every day. Somebody comes in here. <coughs> it's like I could save your son, but I'm going to do something fucked up instead. And by now, she's just like, whatever. Yeah, and so so the man with the super basically this man's superstar runs and grabs this guy's uh, cape, cape, and he yanks it and he grabs the potion and then he stomps on him and then he with goes, his shoe, he st- with his shoe, uh, and he he does say, "Groan, I am a total failure, a lost soul." Good and lord! He said, this guy should have just stepped out of his face and been like, "Fuck you." That would have been much better. <laughs> and then he runs in and apparently the kid lives. And that's this ad, because apparently if you get these shoes... Shoes save children. Shoes save children. We're not going to explain how. Just know that they do. I kind of wish that was it for this show. <laughs> all right. Re- this is the worst I just, collection ever. Like I just read this ad for AA shoes, <laughs> and I was like, all right, that's, that's good enough. I think, I think I kind of... I feel like we kind of peaked. Uh, that's it. We're, we should tap out right now. This has been worst collection ever. <laughs> Thank you. No, there's more to come. Oh, God. Oh, boy. I'm so okay, sorry. Okay, so uh, Diamond Death is in this thing here. We have... Her name is Iris Jacobs. She was a, a lady of... I'm going to say she was a... Uh, she was a school teacher. She's a school teacher. Well, she's a school teacher, but she was also like a bow. A, b- a bow. Bow. Yeah. For, for a, lo- a lover's a lover of uh, Karate Kid, apparently. Yeah. I don't understand how There's a lot works. of that kind of implied. He's this is like, really confusing because we'll talk about this when we get to it at the end because I'm just like, wait a second. What? So anyway, so anyway I so guess they're kind of like together or whatever yeah and so um, basically you know this woman is she has been turned into a diamond lady and she is out in the street and she is just wreaking havoc just you know tearing shit up and she looks ridiculous by the way because her eyes are like princess cut diamonds <laughs> and like the re- she just like she looks terrifying and so robin is there and he's like i'm gonna kick you in the head and then that's when karate kid's like no she'll break because i'm stupid and don't know how diamonds yeah. work and so he kicks Robin instead. Yep. And so then, of course, they fight. They fight. Looks like Robin's using his ass. Oh, like he, he's yeah. farting. It's, it's Dick Grayson. It's he a, uses a, his ass a lot. Yeah. And uh, he's like... Because he's like, look, I'm trying to tell you what's going on with this lady. And he's like, fuck off. Yeah. And, and Robin's like, I don't want to listen to your bullshit because you just kicked me. So I'm going to hit you with my ass. And so they start fighting each other. And, and yeah, they just keep fighting while they're trying to explain and things. And finally, like, he, because men. he knocks Robin over, and he's like, he knocks hey. him into, like He knocks him into, like, a random alley. Yeah, now they're in an alleyway. Somehow they, somehow these two jerks, are, while a woman with diamonds is throwing 
cars and men. These two costume jerks are like, let's go talk in that alleyway. They're just fighting into an alleyway, and then they, uh, yeah. There's going to be some touching. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been, like, on the cover. It says, when Diamond, when uh, Providence. Diamond. Came, th- when, Ryman, when, when, when Karate Kid and the. Uh, uh, Rob and Meat get together. There's going to be some touching. <laughs> oh, uh, I can't keep. Oh, it here. keeps blowing clothes. No, I just want us to read this. It says no. Don't read it. Put it down, guys. Why'd you buy this? <laughs> anyway, so so finally he gets to explain. He's like, my name is Karate Kid. <laughs> and what I... if he just goes karate, karate? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's exactly what he does. Um, and and we have to help that woman. And I'm going to tell you that I'm from, like, a century or something. But first, we have to stop all these guys because she's, like, knocking holes into these stores. And this gang keeps, like, yeah, she's Because, like, yeah, because so basically, where, where, are they in New York or Metropolis? I don't it says It actually says here because Rick Robin's just like, Robin just came by to jerk off. Uh, yeah, wait. Why is I there? don't know. I have no idea where they are. They're in a city. It doesn't really matter where. Yeah, it does. Does it? Oh, it's New York City. Yes, it's New York City. Through New York City on his way to Gotham City. So he's going to Rhode Island. Yep. Because <laughs> we, as we know, per Young Justice, Gotham is in Rhode Island. Oh, yeah. <laughs> makes And it makes sense. Uh, yeah. You know what? Only a state that small could have. Rhode like, Island doesn't even exist in the DC Universe for all they care. Well, no, no it's, offense it's to Rhode just Island. Gotham. Yeah. No, no, no offense to Rhode Island. And as we saw on Gotham, the TV show, when you send a letter to Gotham, you just put Gotham and the zip code. So I'm assuming it's its own state. Uh, yeah. It's kind of like Washington, D.C. Yeah, yeah, pretty it's much. It's its own little yeah. province. I don't know. So so the street gang is looting, uh, looting because they're in New York and everybody's crazy and it's the 70s. And there's gangs. And there's gangs. and uh, of Dudes who all look like they're about 45, by the way. Yeah, 45-year-old men gangs with all look like a bunch of, uh, bunch of like, bibbos and shit. Yeah, and they're all like, we're going to steal TVs. There's a, there's a guy named King Rat who looks like Lemmy. Yeah, because they're all in the rats. One guy's stealing an eight-track. Another guy's stealing a bony TV. I like that they had to be like, no, this is a, we, we can't just assume, you can't just assume it's a TV. You have to put a na- name brand on it. You can't just like draw a TV. Yeah, well, because the way this guy's drawn, he's so close to the front of the thing. It doesn't just, matter. Could have just been. A, they just want to make sure it's a TV. I know that's a TV. But these guys, but these guys are like, yeah, this chick is smashing everything. Oh yeah, yeah, party, party, party. And that's Robin and, and Karate Kid are like, time for us to fight and. So they, they should, yeah. They show up in the, you know, Karate Kid, you know, is ho- chopping yep. people. God, is it is it the wind? What are wind you outside? doing? Yes. Because I'm trying to keep it open. Do you want me to keep it open? No. Okay. I got this. You're having some problems over there. I'm having a problem. I'm reading Karate Kid. Okay. The wind is like, is a- stop reading that. It keeps blowing. Is it, is it our shut. fan? I don't know. I'm assuming it must be the wind from outside. Hey, I'm gonna stop our fan. All right. You the internet. <laughs> oh boy, aren't you lucky, internet? You're stuck with me. <laughs> All right, we're back. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, let's see what, if it keeps blowing shut. No, we're we're fine. Okay. Anyway, so this guy, so they're just slapping. You know, these, these, these karate kids just like, well, the police are busy trying to keep crowds out, so it's time for me to fucking beat up other men. Yeah. Beat up men. So here's Mo Mo uh, Mo from the Free Stooges is gonna hit hit a dude in the face with a with a random stick. Yeah, and then I'm just gonna. Oh, this isn't where he kicks a guy in the junk yet. No, but then that's like soon. Those Robin. Well, that's Robin. Robin just like so Robin. A Robin's guy right a, in the ball. So Robin's like, look, I could take care of a bunch of guys. You got Lex Luthor, and then you got fucking He Man. Yeah. He Man, Newsy He Man. Newsy He Man. <laughs> He's delivering papers. I think that's my brother from like 2001. I think it is actually. <laughs> I think all he needs is like a little sweatband. <laughs> <laughs> that really is your brother. <laughs> I, think that, I think that's my brother. <laughs> I kind of hope. I don't know how what Brian's hair situation is at the moment, but I kind of hope it's a little bit longer, because like I said, you guys really need to get on the the eighties tag team dudes for <sighs> Halloween. Uh, so I'm hoping if he has that hair, it will uh, help with the tag team. <laughs> it work with his hair situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I can wear that. We can go do that around Kamikaze. Yeah. I mean, I'd be honest. I wouldn't mind just wearing a robe could just go buy you a robe and then we could just a hot glue sequins on the back of it so it could say something it's a lot of work 
Yeah, it is. I'm Ric Flair. Or you could be, you could be what's, what's that fucking guy's name? Glorious? Yeah. Bobby Roode? Yeah, you could be that guy. I kind of look more like Bobby Roode. You could be that. You don't have any hair, though. Bobby Roode doesn't have hair. Doesn't he He's have got a short hair like hair? me? You have no hair. I know, I just shaved it. Um, yeah, so my brother gets kicked to the balls. No, oh, yeah, your brother did get kicked to the balls <laughs> by it, Robin. It, and it says, Kush. Yeah. Kush. And he punches Lex Luthor in the face. And then they're all done. He kicks a man in the balls while punching Lex Luthor in the pay face. Yeah, he, he's multi-talented. He's multitasking. Um, and then he's like, okay, well, we're and done. And like, yeah, Karate Kid's like, oh, man, he's awesome. He's like, you're really great. And Karate Kid's like, I'm here from the 30th century. And Robin's like, what? And he's like, never mind. Here come a bunch of Irish cops. I'm assuming they're Irish. <laughs> <laughs> because. Come on. What? Like you. Val at Armor. That's his name. Oh, okay. Val. Oh, Karate Kid. Armor with two R's. You can't tell me is if when DC dudes wrote this in the 70s, they didn't picture those guys with Irish accents. Oh, I know. They're they to- did. Well, they're, but they're totally of Irish descent. I know. Yeah. It's, it's it, They're all, it's all the same dude. Yeah, it's all, they're exactly the same. <laughs> it's all, it's all the doctor, you know, Mr. Mr. O'Brien. Yeah, the, that's Officer all O'Brien. Officer O'Brien. There's four Officer O'Brien. It's a bunch of Conan's. <laughs> um, anyway, so they're like, hey, you know, got Robin and uh, Karate Band, Karate, karate hey, Kid. Uh, thanks. thanks for being great. She, Yeah, we lost her, though. We lost the woman made of diamonds. Yeah. She ran away. Yeah. This crazy woman made of diamonds ran away. We got to find her. And Batman, you know, Robin, of course, is just like, meh. No problem. I've been trained by the Batman. Okay. And I'm like, so? Yeah, exactly. So, so what? So what? So, so what? And he's like, if anyone could find her, I can. You know, it's like, well, no, we just, you know, you're here in your underwear kicking people in the dick. Maybe you can help <laughs> find. Is that what s- Batman taught you? <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like, they would just kick somebody in the balls. I'll show you Batman. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> just kicking people in My the dick. My swollen and- groin was, was kicked by Batman. The only thing I can really do is kick people in the dick and cry. Those are the two things Batman taught me how to do. Uh, so anyway, so basically, so then some guy from Star Lab shows up, and he's like, hey, uh, I'm some random guy. My name is Carl. He's so like, a ra- yeah. I'm a random guy, and I just want to say uh, the Diamond Girl uh, yes. is our fault. Yeah, sorry about that. She's a girl, <laughs> like, she was volunteered, but uh, then, like, cause we were injecting hydrocarbons to see if... People could live in a more polluted, we want to see if it was, environment. We were sciencing on people. We were just doing some science, and uh, it kind of went sideways. So it definitely went sideways. Sorry about that. And and uh, she volunteered, but something went wrong with her. Yeah, sorry. And then we get like that, you know, like a nice pensive shot of Karate Kid being like thinking about her. He's like, should I be upset about her? I mean, Maybe she's a I'm friend, and she can do what she wants, but, like, because you know, he's kind of apoplectic at first, and then he's yeah. like, wait a minute, do I love her? Oh, no. And then we... So I said par- paramour. I was looking for that word earlier. Paramour. Oh, yes. I get it. Paramour of one karate kid. Yes. And so then we cut to... So here's the thing. I believe we cut to the 30th century. Yeah, because they're watching, like, a really old rerun of Robin and the Karate Kid. And they're both closing their eyes. And I mean, at this, sleeping. at this point, like, apparently they have a good how, camera. How long has this been in syndication? Is this like, <laughs> is this like one of those things that dead people are getting checks is for like on TV 13 land? cents? Yeah. Well, they have TV <laughs> land and it's like Batman, uh, Robin in the karate. Robin kicks a guy in a dick. Yeah. The show. Well, I, I will tell you that when I first, and I think I've told this story over here before, but when I first moved to Los Angeles, I was a temp in an office that handled like, you know, accounting for people. And sometimes they would get residual checks for yeah. people who wrote on things like, you know, really old shit. Like, uh, you know, Car 54, Where Are You? Or um, well, all that sh- black and white shit that used to be on Nick at Night when we were kids. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking like, um, about? Patty Duke yes, and Patty all that Duke, stuff. Patty yeah. Duke, like all that sort of shit. Yeah, My Three Sons, yeah. Yeah, and because they were still in syndication and they would play every once we're in a so while. Old. We really are. Uh, they would still get residual checks. So these people would get checks for like literally like 54 cents or something fucking stupid where it cost them more to send the check. Yeah. So yeah, I wonder who's getting a residual for this rerun. This is actually, you, this know, <laughs> I, you know what? I was a year old rerun. Gilbert 
and Frank would be very fascinated to hear about your tales of getting pe- residual checks for people that wrote on. Oh, it's only I, I only remember processing like one or two because I really didn't do much of it, but. But I do remember seeing that and being like, wow, like 54 whole cents, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, that's how it goes. Or 78 That gets you a beer at that bar in the valley. That's right, in residuals. Residuals. Um, so anyway, so we, yeah, we're in the 30th century and a uh, major disaster. And- it kind of actually looks like Robin has Karate Kid's head grafted onto his shoulder. Ooh, creepy. Doesn't Batman- it? He doesn't have the rest of his body. It's just his head. Batman grafted my head onto me. Oh, actually, you know who it was? It was... Uh- Oh, what the fuck was his name? Well, no, it's too early for this. Oh, the that that mute guy, Harold. Oh, Harold, the guy who used to who Bruce Wayne kept captive in the Bat. I just learned about Harold, yeah. which apparently he was in the animated series in some sort. He of was, way. he was in the, but not for long. He was only no. like one episode. Yeah, he's only he was kind of. I remember to him. him. Yeah, he there was a reference to him. I remember him being in there, but he didn't live in the Bat Cave. Well, it was no. like a, well, a did. different garage and because. Then, Keeping him in the bat cave, you're like, oh, you mute man, you can live in my bat cave. That's like keeping a bad prisoner to just fix your shit. No. Well, he did the repair. So the, who's who, people, instead of, you know, Alfred just wasn't doing the repairs. Like, that's who's been doing the repairs. Yeah. You know, he's been fe- he's been eating all the food that Bruce leaves when he runs away. But that's the thing. He, like, can't, can he go upstairs? There's a nice house up there. No, this dude has to stay in the cave. That is a horrible... He has no way of objecting. He's mute. But that's a horrible way to treat a human being. Let's leave him in the dark. Is he, is he, is he like just pointing upstairs and he's like, oh, you want a light bulb, I'm Harold? Sure there you go. I am certain Harold can write. So he could probably write down. Remember, he, he writes, you cunt. Let me go yeah, upstairs. Yeah, pretty much. Like, what the fuck, dude? I'd like to see sunlight again. I have a serious vitamin D deficiency. <laughs> I don't know. I would like to like breathe fresh air, not this stale bullshit. Can I please go to the store? Yeah. Can I like go see my mom? No, his, <laughs> mom, no, his mom told him to get out because he was a hunchback and he was mute. Okay. So, well, so literally, like Batman's the only person that he had was hanging out with him, and you know, and he could still live a normal life. Yeah. This was in the nineties, though. That's what I mean. It's the nineties. It's not the sixties. Yeah. Well, it wasn't happening. It wasn't happening here. No. He did not. This was not Harold's doing. <laughs> fucking harold <laughs> poor harold <laughs> anyway so we're in the i want to talk more about harold but that's all right <laughs> we'll have to find a harold book i know we should find a harold book oh boy because okay. because it, it, spoiler alert he gets shot in the head by hush yep good job but now he's alive apparently in the new 53 or whatever the fuck they're calling oh, it the re- rebirth re- oh oh all right action yeah anyway so there we got the yeah, we got anyways, major disaster and the lord of time who does that thing where he's like, my name is the Lord of Time. Ha ha. Yeah. Because he gives out the plan because basically he wants to like. He's basically fucking with Karate Kid. Like yeah. this whole thing is his plan. It's a big, and he's uh, doing a bunch of stuff so the Karate Kid will react in a way. We're, we'll save this. Uh, I'm going to say I want to save this for later. All right. We'll save that for later. Uh, the, the hostess ad. Um, he's like. You know what about the Justice League? And he's like, "Don't worry about it. They're gonna do exactly what I want I them." Kind of like do. this picture of the Justice League here. It's a good one, yeah. Like Wonder Woman's kind of like, uh, and then Batman's like, "Ha!" And then like mm-hmm. Superman's in the back, like, "I'm, I have a giant hand." Yeah, Green Lantern just sort of looks like he's hanging out. <laughs> yeah, it's a very, it's a very like nonchalant thing. And then yeah, so anyway, so he's watching the run, which I think is funny. The, yeah. the Robin and Craig. I, kid. I would love to know how is he watching them. I don't know. They, they, I don't know. Whatever. He's got people. He's got a guy. He's got a time camera. He's got a time camera, and basically, um, he, you, he he's the one that orchestrated uh, this Wait, mass, this time guy. Is this is this like that that show uh, that was based on that movie like Frequency or whatever, where like that girl CB. Oh, that you can hear the people yeah, she's, talk to she somebody likes, in the future? Yeah, she CB radios back in time with her dad and tells him not to die. Is that kind of the same thing here? 100%, yes. All right, perfect. Now I know how it works. That, <laughs> that explained the science. That, yeah, that's, that's 100%. <laughs> um, anyway, so he's basically fucking with this diamond woman in the, in the, in the 30th uh, century. Yeah, so he's doing all this, and, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's telling doctor master disaster master major disaster uh-huh. that he's like no we're gonna we're gonna beat up the justice league and we'll we'll get we'll get this done i'm awesome and then we go to a waterfront warehouse where uh, rats 
the Rat King, King Rat, who basically looks like Lemmy. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he looks like a biker. R.I.P. Lemmy. Mm-hmm. Um, and his crew, which consists of... Uh, Other s- gross dudes. Jesse Ventura. Um, uh, you know, we got uh, Dick Tracy. Gallagher. Gall- G- Gallagher. <laughs> That's right. I was trying to think of what I thought. I was like, yes. Holy shit, guys. Uh, Lemmy and Gallagher are in cahoots. <laughs> Lemmy, what do you, uh, you deserve so much better? Yeah. I wonder if I, 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 I want to believe that in 1978, Lemmy picked this, this book up and was like, I'm in there. I think that he probably didn't have time. He was probably drunk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Should I, <laughs> should I ask Triple H if he was a fan of the cry? I should. I feel like you take a picture of this and be like, hey, Triple H, do you remember when <laughs> Lemmy and Gallagher were friends? Uh, Triple H doesn't have a sense of humor. Triple H's like, karate kid, duh. <laughs> Anyway, so so like they brought this diamond woman back to their like hideout because, because she's been smashing everything, and they're, and like, they're like, "Hey, we should keep her around to smash more things." But apparently, she's listening to what Lemmy tells her to do. Somehow, 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 apparently, he's somewhat developed some sort he's of. He's the diamond whisperer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you better, you better be careful. He might break her because she's like diamonds are like glass. Um, <laughs> don't whisper too hard. Maybe he's like, if I play my guitar loud enough, she'll shatter. And so, uh, so Karate Kid jumps through the window. Yeah, and he's like, fuck "Hey, you, Lemmy. Lemmy, fuck you." Which, and, which, and then, so, and then, my much of my favorite parts this here. This is so, one of my favorites as well. So he, so Lemmy grabs a axe off of the wall of this warehouse and throws it at him. Which it's really weird because the way that he throws it, so like it looks like the first perspective is that they're like right in front of each other right but then he throws it and then like there's a bunch of distance and oh he yeah somehow, i don't know how he throws this so like it looks like he grabs it and then like underhands it and then whips it forward i, I guess because, and it just goes straight ahead yeah with the, and like the pointy end isn't facing karate the blade kid. out it's just the big part that's attached to the yeah, it's the top of the axe it's the top and that's the part that's going right towards karate kid's face and He's drawn where he looks all terrified, but then he just like karate chops it and it splinters into like a million pieces. The metal and the wood splinter. He right. does a karate, he goes karate, and then he goes right. slam. He, he doesn't just hit it away. It splinters. And Lemmy's like, fuck this shit, I'm out. And so he runs away, probably. Well, right for, I mean, for, also, he realizes, like, I mean, like, Gallagher, Gallagher forgot his his thing. Yeah. If Gallagher had a sludge of this, this is actually this where Gallagher diff- got the idea for the sludge of uh, I don't know if you know this, but this is the origin of the sludge matic because he was imagining the Karate Kid's head was going to pop like a water balloon. I would love and it. And when it didn't, he was like, you know what? I need to go smash some fruit. You know, if DC had any sense, they in the 80s would have did a... Uh, Brought this guy back, and on the cover of him fighting the Legion, we've been like, "Y'all ready to smash some Legion?" <laughs> no, DC couldn't have done that. They wouldn't have had the sense of humor. No, no, they wouldn't. They would have. They would have just. They would have just left that one hang. But I wouldn't have. No, no, no. You would have done it. No, in the I'm night, so it, I would. I would have made that happen. So um, <laughs> they're like, "Fuck this, we're out." And Robin's standing there, and they start punching guys in the face. Robin punched both Gallagher and Dick Tracy in the face at the, at same-, the same time with well, no, one hand. He punched Dick Tracy, and then Gallagher was just right behind him, so close that he got knocked out by proxy. Yeah, I would have loved it if he would have knocked Dick Tracy's hat off, and it would have landed on Gallagher. <laughs> it really should have, because he did knock it off, and it should just landed on his head, and that would have been funny. And Robin's uh, like, "Yeah, Robin's like, haha, I'm I'm here to talk, you know." Mm-hmm. Whatever, and like, karate kids, like, I'm here to talk with my fist. Right. And so, Diamond Lady, she's there, and he's like, hey, let's try to figure something out. And she's like, no. And she tries to claw him. Well, she doesn't say anything. She doesn't, but she's just like, she's fuck made that. a diamond. Right. Diamond death. She's just like, fuck Why did that. she get a name? I don't know. How did, did somebody... I don't know why people just aren't calling her Iris, but whatever. They call her Diamond Death. Crazy so Diamond Lady. They're calling her Diamond Death. She starts. He's like, I'm your friend. Don't you recognize me? And she just like starts punching. Well, it's funny because she looks at him with her like, and now she had instead of having just like the the princess diamonds. Yeah, now they're like has, rubies. She has like ru- ruby, ruby red eyes, and then she decides to turn around and scratch him on the back. Yeah, and then he's like, Oh no, I could see her emotions in her she eyes. She hates and those diamond eyes, and I have to call it hate. Yep. 
She hates his stupid ass. She hates his stupid ass, and now she's just po- trying to pound away. He tries to put a put a fucking. They try to put a barrel barrel around over her, like it's like some sort of. Fucking, this, this is a Stooges episode all of a Stooges. sudden. Well, I mean, Mo was here earlier. Yeah, that's true. You got Gallagher in here. <laughs> I mean, come on. So this is, this is written for comedy fans, guys. And they're both like, we can't hit her because she'll shatter because we neither one of us know how diamonds work robin should know robin has been saving stopping catwoman and along with batman to stealing diamonds and he's like he's never probably ever said hey batman watch out don't drop those diamonds they might explode they might break uh i think if batman were to come across if if robin were telling him this story (laughs) and he was like hey so we couldn't hit this woman because she was made out of diamonds i think batman would be like he would sigh, and then he would like make Robin read books for a lot. Lo- he'd be like, "You're an idiot. You like, why are you so fucking stupid?" What was it one time? I was old, there was the uh, was it in the Batman and Robin movie where in the not in the in the movie but in the cartoon the uh-huh. Batman and Son uh-huh. when he's like like Dick Dick is like. It's like he used to lecture me all the time to not have sex. Or oh no, to wear condoms. To wear condoms. Yeah. Yo, because he's doing that while talking about because Damien showed up. But there was I just I like I like I like knowing the conversations when they're talking shop. I just assume that Batman is like an annoying dad who like constantly lectures you about safe sex. And you're like, I get it. Yeah. I get it. But there was also that one time where like Superman, I forget what it was, it was like a Justice League episode or something, and Superman wanted to do something, like pull something away, and he's like, if I had a week, I couldn't explain to you why that wouldn't work. And I imagine that that's the conversation he's having here with with Dick. Is, yeah. I can't tell you how, in all the ways that you are wrong <laughs> about this diamond woman. Right, and so basically they decide that in order to stop her, they have to hit her at the same time in a proper pressure point uh-huh. because apparently also her skin yeah if you become reacts, will react the same way if as you if become you were, diamonds you still have pressure you points. still you still have to worry like you, you you would still be susceptible to like people can still give you a dead arm. nerve holds like, like your if, brother if, can still walk Yoko up to you and punch you in the arm and your arm will still you can still get a charlie horse if you are a diamond yeah and you're like god damn it and so so basically uh they punch Kar- her in the hip. Well, Karate Kid punches her in the kidney, and Robin punches her in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. They and then do. she just, she's just she was poor. like, oh, my ass. She's like, oh, my ass and my kidney. Which I didn't know the ass was a pressure point, but apparently it is. I would like to see that in an episode, upcoming episode of Gotham where he's like, he's like, hey, you know, hey, uh, uh, you know, Steve Wayne. Because we go, because Steve and Bruce are gonna be out there. Steve Wayne left. No, yeah, he'll Steve come back Wayne. though, and he'll he'll. What's gonna happen is they're gonna defeat um, the Penguin by doing the ass kidney punch. Oh, good, together. that'll be exciting. They're that'll, gonna re- go back good. and read this because this, be this is why this is why they keep these books on file oh, at yeah, in DC. Well, they pull this of out course. and they go. Have we ever done the ass kidney punch again? <laughs> Let's do it again. That will work, right? That will work on like regular people. This works on just, a diamond I person. Re- I really love the idea that they're so worried that any way that they hit her is going to shatter her but then they just both punch her at the same time because apparently that cancels it out yeah yeah because it, I'm it, like, it, you obviously she wasn't going to shatter in the first place but you guys were so concerned about it and then you're like meh and then you just punch her anyway all right so basically they immobilized her without smashing her and they're like well we got to take her back to star and he's like um and he's like no i exiled myself from a bunch of legion stuff Yeah. okay so here's what i don't understand oh okay so he is all for iris like he kind of likes her and they have a Appar- thing apparently he's been here long enough to, de- to develop a thing develop a thing however he went back to the 20th century to try to prove to some king of stupidity or whatever <laughs> that he's good enough to marry his daughter <laughs> so who Princess Projector? Princess Projector is basically also but, a, a heel. She wanted to become Censor Girl. But spoiler alert. So what? What the fuck you doing, bro? But he's like, he's. I'm not returning to the 30th century. But Iris is more important, so I'm taking her with me. Oh, so he's gonna take her. Yeah, he's gonna take this Diamond Woman to the 30th to the 30th century. century to see if she could be cured and then the time guy is like ha sweet he's like this will totally prove to that guy that i'm worthy of his daughter when i bring back another woman 
It's like he's like, how did you incapacitate? It's like, well, Robin, Robin <laughs> punched, her, punched her, in her in the ass, and I punched her in the kidney. <laughs> um, and also, I don't know how diamonds work. No. And also, I think she's my girlfriend. Can I marry your daughter? Can I marry your daughter? <laughs> Legion. <laughs> I fucking hate the Legion. Uh, I bought another Legion. I think I bought another Legion book. Uh, I think you did. I think we might have some fun with that. That one we might have a little bit of fun with, but we'll see. So, so this was this was this has been good so far, guys. This, this has been fun, and so that's the end of the book. That's it. That's how it goes. And you know what happens in the next issue? Uh, she breaks. No. Well, apparently, okay. Well, would you read the next issue of this book? Mm. I would not seek it out, but if we had it, I would read it. I would read this if it was collected. Yeah. If somebody put all these in a, one book. Oh, I'm not reading the trade, no. I'll read a trade. No. I'll read a Karate Kid trade. No. If I have absolutely nothing else ever to read ever again. <laughs> well, then, <laughs> are we really going to run out of reading material? I don't like, know. Like, if the apocalypse happens tomorrow and all the and all sorts of Karate Kid comics. And all we've got left to read is the shit that's in our apartment. Eventually, we'll go through it all. Yeah. I'll even <laughs> read the Catwoman books. <laughs> I think you'd like them more than you realize. I probably would. Yeah. Um, I don't know what you think's happening in the Catwoman books, but I don't know. It just seems like a lot of like thievery and stuff. Well, yeah, that's her. That's her thing. You know, and she's, you know, looking great because the Jim Balland Catwoman. Oh yeah, she's drawn ridiculous. It helped me out. Did it? Did it help you when you were a young boy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Nothing. What? No, I'm nothing. I'm uh, okay. That was a thing that I was really into. All right. For as drawing goes, I know it's weird, but no, it's cool. Whatever. <laughs> There's no judgment. This is a no judgment zone. <laughs> You're so mad at me right now. Oh my god! No, I'm not. No, it's fine. It's just you know, it's. I I imagine you are not the only guy who's like, man, Jim Balance Catwoman. When I was a kid, well, when I think when I think of '90s comics, comic babes, she's probably the first one that comes to my mind. Well, yeah, and I'm sure you're not the the only guy to say that. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's fine. Whatever. You know, I mean, because '90s, well, but then again, a lot of '90s comics women were impossibly well created. They, at least, like she at least looked like yes, she's ridiculous with big old tits or whatever, but. She's not one of those like her thighs are like nineteen feet longer than they should be. Oh yeah, well the one like, anything anything in those Wonder Woman nineties books. Jesus and Christ. like her waist is like as big around as a pencil and like she's yeah, at least she looks somewhat That's why I that's normal. probably I didn't I never I said the guy I was never really into like the 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 image stuff though. Yeah. Because you know, because not not because like I wasn't like I mean, because they would do like Gen thirteen and I'd be like that It's just because those it looks girls look fucking ridiculous. Weird. Yeah. It looks fucking weird. Yeah. Yeah. Wizard yeah. Magazine, guys. Yeah. Lots of lots of opinions in there. Anyways. Um Yeah. That's it for Karate Kid. Oh, you want to talk about this ad real quick? Sure. Cuz basically it's a hostess ad where Wonder Woman is Wonder Woman is uh Yeah, so basically Wonder racing Woman's, a train she, for exercise cuz apparently she is as fast as the Flash. She's doing it. She's doing it on like she's just racing a train for fun. Which I would be honest, if I was a train conductor, I'd be like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, this isn't cool. But I don't. Just, can Wonder Woman run really fast? Has that always been her thing? I know she can fly. I know she's super strong. Does she also have super speed? Probably. Maybe. I, you know what's funny is I didn't realize she actually flew for a long time. I know. I just realized that, I think like a couple years ago. Yeah. And like my brother tweeted at me, he's like, "I don't even know why you're my, how you're my brother." <laughs> so literally, okay. So Wonder Woman's right running, and she sees a rock slide. She's like, "Oh, I gotta save these children that are doing some bullshit." Here's a question about by this. the train, like so, right by the train. Yes, that's my question. So there's, and by a mountain, there's a rock slide right by a mountain onto the tracks, and she's like, "I have to save these kids." So were these kids playing on the railroad track? They're doing something. Looks like a. Uh, Oh, I think they're picking flowers or something. Sure. They're doing some sort of agriculture, some 4 H bullshit. Yeah, right by the train <laughs> track, because that's where you want to be. And she's like, hey, kids. And instead of being like, kids, get out of the way. You're in mortal danger. She's like, kids, let me bribe you with these Twinkies. And then they're like, oh, good idea, random woman. And they come over well, to see like, Well, they know it's Wonder Woman, but well, they can age, but she's also got cake. She got cake with cream filling. I don't That'll tr- take me away from this mountain I and I wouldn't uh, trust a superhero bearing cake. I don't, I don't know. I probably would. 
Every single time one of them shows up, I wanna, I wanna, shitty I happens. I wish that would happen. To normal people. <laughs> I wish that would happen in like a like a like like one of these Marvel books. You think I need a cake least... Superman brought me? I'd be like, where'd you find this space? Am I going to die? I wish that would happen in like Daredevil on Netflix or something where he's just like, <laughs> you know, he's fighting the, you know, he's fighting some, you know, whoever, he's you know, like, some here, thugs. Here. And he just starts throwing pies at them. <laughs> and then he's like, they're like, hang on, pies? I could stop. I could stop uh, murdering everybody to eat this pie. Never trust a superhero bearing food. Yeah, I wish that would happen at least. I wish just how all the Marvel book, Marvel movies would end. Yeah, or do you, that's not, that's not, that should be like a bonus scene in like there should have been a bonus scene in uh, Man of Steel. What Superman just bringing people food? Or, I mean, or, if it's like or it, Batman v Superman, if it's in like an understand, it's like oh okay, well maybe you don't have enough food, or or maybe like you know there's been a disaster, so they're bringing you some food. That makes sense. But if you're just like hanging out picking flowers, and somebody shows up and they're like, hey you, you want a cake? Don't trust that person. I would love it if the, when Batman that's and poisonous. Bat- you're and gonna grow like nine dicks. <laughs> I would love it if a Biv- and Bivis. Uh, Superman and uh, Doomsday are fighting, and Batman's like, you know, and they're like, "Oh, I've got to stop him!" And Batman just throws a cake at him, like he just throws some Hostess pies at him. That's pretty much uh, as useful as Batman was in <laughs> Batman v Superman during that last fight, because he's just like, "I'm going to hide behind this thing and maybe shoot him with the, with my last bullet. I'm not going to go try to find the spear or do anything helpful. I'm just going to like cry." <laughs> well, Wonder Woman basically kicks his ass. Yeah. All right, folks. We spent forty-eight minutes talking about Karate Kid. We'll uh, be back with the next book. Hey guys, it's Adam Ray and Josh Wolf, and we have a new podcast on the Sideshow Network called Good Call. It's a sports show for the casual fan. We aren't talking stats, no spreadsheets, or in-depth analysis, nothing like that. Yeah, it's just fan opinions that will make you laugh and think. So if you want to listen to it, download, rate, and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or check us out on the Sideshow Network.tv slash good call or anywhere you get your podcasts. I'm not sure how much thinking is being done. What? Yeah. All right, we're back here on Worst Collection over here on Sideshow Network. Uh, this next one is our Marvel book, and it is a legendary find on our part, which oh, we came yeah. across yesterday for fifty cents, and I have been—I I haven't really been looking for this, but well, no, it's—I've never actually even seen it. And when I saw it in the box, I, I actually gasped. I was like, <laughs> "What the fuck? I can't believe I just came across this!" Because we've talked about it before. It's just I've never seen it. Yeah, and it's uh, so it's. The way that it's actually the title is it's World WCW World Championship Wrestling. The Marvel Comic Book. <laughs> the Marvel actually the Marvel Comic Book. They did a book. They did twelve issues of this. Uh in nineteen ninety two. And this is this is a book about pro wrestling. Oh, a comic Shit. book about pro wrestling. I don't think the WWE even had a, a comic book about pro wrestling Ugh. until much later, uh, much later on. Uh, I don't think they ever did anything, which is surprising considering they had a cartoon and they could have easily have done something with Marvel or DC or something, whatever in the in the Haiti in the eighties heyday. Mm-hmm. But uh, WCW had an actual Marvel, a, a mar- actual comic book, uh, and uh, we have issue number one. First body slam and collectors issue. So much money. Mm-hmm. Uh, 50 entire cents. From April 1992. We got it's an all out battle royal for a shot at the title. Will any man beat Lex WCW champ Lex Luger? And an arrow pointing at Mr. Luger himself. Lex Luger. Uh huh. And uh, it's a photo, it's a photo cover. And I think they're all photo covers, because yeah, why the fuck not? Sure. Because the art itself. Yeah, let's, let's be I honest. I mean, the art itself is it's fine. It's not horrific. It's not great, but it's fine. It's for 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 what you're looking at. I mean, you don't want to. I feel like it's better they just use pictures. Yeah. So you got Lex Luger on the cover, and then you got Sting 
The man called Sting up in the corner here. Mm-hmm. Hanging out. Mm-hmm. His little picture he's ready to grab. Um, but, that, yeah, so that's... We're going to read that. We're going to we talk about this. We found this yesterday. We found this yesterday. And I, this is a hard... I feel like this has been a hard book to come across. Because it's one of those things where it's like, you know, they only did 12 issues. Yeah. And it's just... You know, it's it's a random ship all Marvel book from the nineties. Mm-hmm. So you know, you go to like places and you just come across them, but you know, yeah, you, know, you just you don't you don't really find them. And then I don't know. I just I was very shocked at the fact that we found this. But not only this, but the first issue as well. So I have eleven more issues to go, <laughs> and I will hopefully find them. Yes, I'm going to check them out. So. Uh, yeah. So on the cover, in front, in, in right here, we got basically establishing because there's really not a lot to say if our story goes. Uh, no, there's no story. All right. So here's the, here's the problem that I have with this book. Uh huh. I am not a wrestling fan. You're not? No. No. Oh. You watch I, wrestling with me? Yes, I watch wrestling with you because it happens to be on constantly in our house. But I'm not like I'm not going to sit down and watch a match when you're not home. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> that kind of makes me sad. I don't know. For some reason, that made me sad that I wouldn't walk in and you'd be like, honey, I'm watching wrestling. No, I would not be watching wrestling. I'm sorry. No, you wouldn't. Just know. like, okay, would you go to a VNV Nation show without me? Well, no, that's that's your favorite band. Yeah, but that's the thing. You're not going to go without, like, if you were just like... But we wouldn't normally go... I would probably... Let's just pretend, like, I'm... I wouldn't go without you because we do things together. Okay, pretend I'm, I can't be there because I have to, like, go home for some reason. Uh-huh. And you don't come with me and you stay here. And you're like, oh, hey, I just found out VNV Nation is playing tonight. I'm gonna go by myself. Would that ever happen? No, because I would want to go with you. You're, you're missing... I know that. I understand, but... <laughs> Yeah, so it's kind of like, well, I'll watch wrestling with you. That's fine. I have no problem with it. I don't hate wrestling, you know, but I'm not going to be like, man, I got to find out more about wrestling. And I just, it's fine. No, so, you just live, you live, live with me. You already know. Exactly. I just sort of like learn it through osmosis and it's whatever. It's not going to be something that I'm just like, I'm a huge wrestling fan. Uh, I, it's fine. Um, so for, for me, for reading this book, which is mostly just a play by play of this match, is uh boring yeah <laughs> okay you can say it's boring it's exceedingly because it is tedious boring. it's a very te- it's a very thin premise it really is it's just like hey guys here's the beginning of this book lex luger is the champion lex luger's a champion he's and, doing a muscle and we're pose we're gonna talk about the squared circle instead of just calling it a ring because i don't know what's wrong with you wrestling because that's people. what they called the, they just, they just, that's it's what they, a ring well they, i know but that's what they would call it the square circle i don't care they were all wrong. <laughs> that was just a, that's just the thing they used. Right. And so now we're in the locker room, which... So now we're in the locker and I, room. And I have to say that the, the art in this book, a lot of them... I mean, it's fine, but it's drawn almost very like targeted toward a juvenile audience, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Because it looks younger, more cartoony. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess. Um, Especially that top locker room shot. Yeah. Well, you know, you got to have people look like something. So there's all these dudes in the locker room. So, okay. So here's 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 the deal. So basically, there's going to be a battle royal. Mm-hmm. And whoever wins the battle royal, of, obviously, we just talked about it. It's on the cover. It says on the cover. It's going to be a battle royal. Yep. Whoever wins gets to fight Lex Luger. Yep. And we've got, in the forefront, we got La- Ron Simmons. Alive. A lot. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah. We'll, we'll go through and say he was, was alive and dead. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Which, remarkably, not as many. Not as many dead wrestlers as you would think. No, for 90s, a book about ni- a comic book about 90s wrestling, there not be, a lot of dead people. There should be more dead people in this book. There, 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 could, there could potentially, there should have Eventually, be. all of these guys will be dead, but at the moment, they're not. So we have Ron Simmons, who's in the forefront, and he's like looking like he's constipated, and he's like, Lex, my man, you're going down. Yeah. Uh, and then we got... Terrence Taylor. Who's kind of just like behind everybody else. Yeah, Terry Taylor, very he unassuming. He doesn't matter. Terry Taylor, that's pretty much his entire career. Kind of not really, you know. Like his, his his entire body is pretty much like taken up by Ron's head. Yeah. So. And then you got El Gigante, who, dead. Dead. 
the giant El Gigante. How'd he die? Uh, from being gigantic. Oh, did he have like that? He had the Andre the Giant disease, and he just, you know, he had bad heart, bad kidneys. He had he, he was in pretty rough shape by the time, you know. Well, did and he, it so did he about get it fixed? Or I know I if don't you know don't if get, get it fixed, it gets even worse. He was, I don't think he got a fi- I don't know. He okay. was one of those guys who, like, he did some wrestling. He only wrestled for maybe, like, three years. Yeah. Maybe three, maybe four years. He had a run in WCW as El Gigante, and then he went to WWE, where he was known as Giant Gonzalez. Okay. And he was the guy that wore the furry man suit. He uh, was a, he was like a Sasquatch man. Okay. I'll show you a picture later. You're not going to like it. But it's uh, not the Yeti. No, no it's mummy. not the Yeti. It's well, that not was the an Yeti. actual mummy. They I think they wanted him at some point to play the Yeti. Oh. But, like an actual Yeti or like a mummy that they just called the Yeti. Right. They wanted him to play that role, but then they got the the Ron Stud to play it. Huh. Anyway, so um but uh, yeah, Eligante was Giant Gonzalez, and then he retired because you know he's because yeah, because originally he was supposed to play basketball for the Atlanta Hawks. Yeah, and he got his knee blown out. Okay, and so you know being in Atlanta and the, you know the Hawks were on TBS and all that stuff, he was like, they were like, well, why don't we see if we can get him to wrestle? Because you know he's yeah. an athlete. Right, but he was a terrible athlete. Right, he's you know he's a gigantic man who. Well, a lot of times too, if you have that pituitary gland disease, and you don't get it fixed, yeah, you just continue to grow, and as you continue to grow, you just get more fragile and more fragile and more fragile. Yeah, and that's basically because your body just yeah can't he was take he was wheelchair ridden by the time yeah your body just can't take it away. and you just eventually die because your heart explodes from being too big or whatever. Yeah, so we have uh, Rick and Scott Steiner, who. Uh, we all know who the Steiner brothers are. Steiner uh, lovers of Shonies. Uh, <laughs> That's right. I forgot. Shonies. They love Shonies, and they don't lo- they own a Shonies. They own a Wait, Shonies. Did it burn down? No, they oh. no they Can not. <laughs> they in the commercial they knocked down an old Shonies. Right. While while Rick Steiner rode in a Rick, Rick Scott Steiner drove a. Uh, but it's like it's a bulldozer. Bulldozer. <laughs> there you go. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> You're not an idiot. I'm an idiot. I could no. not really think of what the fuck would they, they used. I'm like, it's a bulldozer. The machine with the scoopy. <laughs> he used a scoopy to run his brother into the Shonies, and it went and it knocked out, got knocked down. And yeah, so Shonies is like a Shonies is like a a Bennigan's? No, no, Shonies is like a Denny's. Shonies is like a like a Southern Denny's. All right. All it's right. like a it's like a it's like the you know I'm trying to think what's another example here. It's like going to the uh, you know that? Remember that place, Spires in yes, the South Bay? Yes. It's like that, but in in the South. And Rick Steiner, it's got oh, Steiner owns one. Yeah. So, so they're there. Uh, Flying Brian, dead. Hmm. Um, Flying Brian, uh, who looks like all for some reason he's missing a hand because it's getting lost in his locker because the coloring is bad. Yeah, I think that's what's going on. Uh, we also have PN News, who uh, PN News was. Uh, the rapping wrestler. Ah, he, was yeah, a big, well, he, was a, he was a big fat guy who used to do raps, and he'd be like, "Yo, Sting's gonna beat my man," you know, whatever. Um, he was not very good at rapping, mm. but he was, you know, he was kind of like, "Hey, you know, it's kind of like DC Comics being like, hey, give Superboy a ring.' It's like yeah. SW was like, we need a rapper. We need a rapper.' And he uh, had a finisher called the Broken Record, which was a big fat splash off the top rope. Um, he went on to become. Uh, he went on to have better success in Germany, uh-huh. wrestling as Cannonball Grizzly. Okay, which is a that's a weird name, but uh, apparently that was his name. But he did pretty good. Yeah, he did pretty good there, and mm. he's never. I don't think he's ever. He, he never got to the E. He showed up in ECW like later on, but yeah, I like I like saying these things. These are exciting. Yeah, uh, Big Van Vader, or just the man called they call Vader, still alive, still alive, and uh, still being Vader. You know, and he's, I think he's doing curls. I don't know what he's doing. He's got his mask on, his full mask on at the time before, you know, he had the jockstrap kind of mask. Yeah. Uh, But Vader's awesome. We all love Vader. Um, Well, not not everybody loves Vader. I like Vader. Um, The Diamond Stud, a.k.a. Scott Hall. Oh. This is back when he was uh, DDP's charge. (coughs) DDP was a manager in WCW. And he brought in Scott Hall as the diamond stud, and he would wear, like, those, like, 90s overalls. 
Oh, okay. You know, to the ring, and yeah. then like he'd have like a woman come in the ring and be like, "Hey, look at this man. Yeah, he's hot. Yeah, rip off his his overalls, and you know he'd rip off his overalls and have his wrestling underwear on, and he'd beat up guys. So that's how that's how that went. Mm. Uh, and then also in the very 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 far back, we have uh, the natural Dustin Rhodes, aka Gold Dust. Oh, is that du- oh okay? Yeah, it's Gold Dust. Sorry, I was like Dustin Rhodes. Dustin Rhodes. Is Ro- that who did Dusty Rhodes at one time go by Dustin Rhodes? No, I didn't realize that was Gold Dust. No, that's Gold Dust. Dustin Rhodes in the back here, and very early in his EC- uh, eh, not early. He's he's been around. He was around for at least a year at this point. Uh, WCW, and then you know, whatever. Uh, then we got Johnny B. Bad, who is basically a little Richard impersonator. Yeah, who is alive. Uh, he's a motivational speaker. Yeah. Uh, most recently famous, uh, well, well, famous for a m- number of things that were, you know, <coughs> strange. Not strange, but you know, he uh, his wife, ex wife, was Sable, who is married to now Brock, Le- Brock Lesnar. Uh huh. Um, and he also uh, was a very big, prominent voice in the uh, Nancy Grace bullshit when. Uh, Chris Benoit killed his family. Family. Oh. So he was one of those guys who come out and say WWE, ah, you know, fuck them, whatever, you know. So he's not on good terms. He's he will be not going. He will not be going to the Hall of Fame. Uh, <laughs> okay. And then we have Barry Windham, mm-hmm. the classic wrestler Barry Windham, uh, the great Barry Windham, uh, Aaron Anderson. Mm-hmm. At this time, Barry Windham was a face. He was not a part of the Horseman. He was a Horseman a couple of years before this. But Aaron Anderson. Is here, and Art Anderson. I like Art Anderson has way more hair than he should. Right, Art Anderson, as we know him, he does not have that much hair. Well, he does in this book, but he's got a nice coif here. Uh, so good on him. And it's funny because he's just like, this is the crock. I don't want to compete with these losers. Yeah, and he's he's right because some of these are losers. He, should be, he shouldn't have to compete in a battle royal against PN News for a right to win. <laughs> Just fuck PN News. He should be nowhere near the, the heavyweight title scene. You know, <laughs> I, I, I agree with him. He should be, he, there should be uh, some higher talent in here. It shouldn't even be a battle royal, but you know, you know he should have, you know. You have Ar- a lot of thoughts about that. Arn Anderson deserves better. Yeah. And then last but not least, well, no, not last, wait, the after, we have one more after this, but we have, uh, the Z Man, Tom Zink. The Z Man, Tom Zink. Who? Uh, okay, so Tom Zink. Tom Zink was like one of those like pretty boy guys. Like he used to team with uh, Brian Pillman, and then he teamed with a bunch of other random guys who was like, "Yo, we're the pretty boys. We like you know, we like girls." And it's the nineties. Hey, look at our fanny packs. <laughs> I got a mullet. I'm wearing Zubas kind of thing, you know? Zubas. Yeah, and he was one of those guys. He was, you know, but he's, you know, he's a handsome guy, you know, athletic, you know, but he didn't have, like, a ton of charisma. So he didn't really do a ton, you know, but he was one of those guys who, after he got out, he would always, like, go places and or go on, like, radio shows and internet shows and be like, yeah, I fucking, I deserve this, and Vince McMahon said this, and this guy, fuck this guy, and fuck that guy. Mm-hmm. You know, he just had a big mouth and stuff like that, and, you know, we don't hear from him much anymore. He's probably got a good job doing nothing, having nothing to do with wrestling. Z-Man things. Yeah, I assume he's probably, like, a, you know, running his own business or something, probably or running a gym, or... Car, usually wrestlers either go car, car dealership, dealership, car dealership, real estate, real estate, gym, gym. Yeah, those three are the big ones. Sometimes you do printing services, uh, like Barry Darso did. Uh, sometimes you go into computers, like Paul Roma did. Well, we know for a fact that uh, Ted Arcidi. Ted Arcidi, he did the gym route. Gym. He did the gym route. Yeah, he did. Helped break in Triple H. Also, uh, sold gym equipment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously, if if you're gonna bulk up, you might as well ask the dude who just bench seven. You might as well you might as well, you might as well ask cows. the bulkiest man. <laughs> who, uh, by the way, guys, if you didn't know, I did a short film once about starring pro wrestling, Ted starring Ted R. C. D. Called Maybe not Smark. Starring, but he was definitely in it. He was in it. Ted's a good guy. Yeah, it's a good. He's a good man. Yeah. Um, and then last but not least, and also I gotta say, it's really creepy though because so everybody's kind of just like standing there, just kind of puts it around but for some reason z-man 
is like he's going into his locker, but he's staring right at us. Like, do you see this here? What am I looking at? The Z-Man. Oh, yeah. No, he's looking directly. He, he's the, looking the directly viewer. into your soul. Which is weird. And it's creepy. It and he's got like, the, like, like, he's just got like, yeah, he's got a lot of hair. Yeah. He has way, again, way more hair than the Z-Man oh, should have. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I'm saying here, guys, I, I got to say, there's a lot, some people here have a lot more hair than they should. Uh, and then last but not least, we have Sting, who at the time was the U.S. champion. But let's see, this is 1992. So he already lost the title by this time. Uh, he was actually almost heavyweight champion at this time, I think. And... Or maybe Ron Simmons was. I don't know. Obviously, they drew and they took care of this way back when he was. Sometime before um, November 1991, uh-huh. because Sting had the U.S. title up until that point. Okay. So the, all this stuff is before that. Okay. So although I'm surprised that Scott uh. Steiner's in there because he was injured around that time. What? What? Can we talk about the comic book? No. Okay. <laughs> There's a. I appreciate your your extensive wrestling knowledge, but we're literally only on the first page, and we've been doing this for twenty minutes. Is there really anything in this book that's worth talking? No, about? No, I mean it's really boring. It's a very very tedious book. Okay. Anyways. Okay. So you guys so had, continue on. With well, I had to give. I had. I had, I had to give the background. I had to give the background. I, I'm really glad. I would like everybody to know that Sean did no research for this. Oh, I did he's zero not, research. This he's not all, looking not at anything. Lo- this is all in his head. I, I want yeah. you to know that this is the yeah. knowledge that Sean has. Yeah. He is a, a wrestling expert. <laughs> <laughs> he did no. No, this is just all off the top of his head. And if you think, like, you think I'm bad, Dave Meltzer is like, <laughs> holy shit, if you've ever listened to Dave Meltzer talk, he is rattling off, like, house gates from, like, 30 years ago in Memphis, off the top of his head. Yeah. You know, me knowing when Sting lost his uh, U.S. title in 1991, November 19th, uh, is... I'm actually, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm right, though. Um, yeah, I remember that we did trivia once at this place in Alston when we lived in Boston, and there was this guy, and he would just, like, make up questions, and you would just, like, shout out the answers or whatever, and you'd wear the win shitty T-shirts. You win T-shirts that he got from radio stations. That he got from radio stations. But, so, I mean, it was fun to go to, whatever. And, like, there was a wrestling category, and whatever the answer was it was wrong and i have never seen sean so upset because he would be like no tatanka was an 80s wrestler i'm like no he wasn't he was not he didn't debut professionally until 1990 and that was on the indies yeah and he's like he's in the 80s i'm like you fuck you <laughs> Gee, Sean was really upset after I'm that. still mad I know you are still mad anyway so let's get on with this <laughs> alright so Sting signing autographs and everybody loves Sting as all the should, kids cause, love cause Sting Sting's fucking awesome I noticed that it's no adults all adults think Sting is oh, terrible the- now this is before Sting walked around dressed like the crow yeah he was a California Sting he had I, the-, the fact that, St- that Sting is still doing that uh, literally 21 years after that movie came out that's some dedication. Yeah. To bullshit. Well, that was that was his thing though. That's what people like a lot of time for I mean, a lot of people that grew up in the, you know, the late ni- early eight, early 90s and everything, you know, they were accustomed to this thing, you know, late 80s early 90s, but as you know, but for a lot of people that came out to wrestling during its boom in the late 90s, mm-hmm. Sting was the crow. And that's like, oh man, fucking Sting. Yeah, crow and stealing and all that shit yeah you know so that's that that was a big deal um and that's why he's still doing it because it still makes sense does it though it makes sense i mean i still love that movie i will you know little goth girl that i was i will forever love the crow but do uh, like regular people have as much of a connection with that movie as me where I could like literally just like watch the crow in the craft until I die and I would be a happy person. Mm-hmm. So, yep. <laughs> so, anyways, we get to the, finally gets finally we get to the battle royal. <laughs> yeah, get to the battle royal, and like literally, it's the same. And bullshit. there's the announcers, and there's a well, there's lot the of hair. Well, there's the announcers. We've got, and this is the announce team that I don't think ever actually, maybe it did actually happen. Yeah, 
Because I don't remember Missy Hyatt ever being an announcer per I se. I think they just felt like they probably needed a woman. They needed a woman. They and needed Missy Hyatt with giant hair. Oh my god, this is eighties hair. This is not nineties hair. This is eighties hair. We have we have uh, Pauly Dangerously, uh-huh. Paul Heyman, Paul Heyman with again lots of hair. Oh yeah, everybody's like, give me more hair. He has more hair than Arn Anderson here, and Arn Anderson has way too much hair. So I mean, and you're thinking, <laughs> if you know what Paul Heyman, Paul Heyman looks like, he does not have hair. No. Nope. Uh, you know, Paul Ahem is awesome, but... Doesn't have hair. And it looks nothing like him, to be honest. No, it doesn't. It looks like... They're just like, gen- draw a generic man and call it Paul Heyman. It looks like it could be Vince McMahon for all I know. It's just a generic man. He's just, draw a newscaster. And, 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 and first, that's exactly what it and looks we got, like. And we got Missy Hyatt, and then we got Jim Ross, who actually looks like Jim Ross. They nailed it pretty good with Jim Ross here. Doesn't he usually wear a hat? No, this is before he was good old JR, because oh, there was a okay, fear... He went you. from being... Jim Ross, the respectable announcer, to being when he went to WWF, they're like, you got to have a character. Oh, okay. You got to kind of be good old JR. Hee haw. I'm wearing a hat. Right. You know, I get so. You. But it's a pretty good. I, I feel like tweeting this. Like, well, Jim Ross will tweet back at you. Oh, you know, shit. Yeah. He'll well, talk to you. Maybe you should tweet him and be like, I found this comic book. Look, here you are. People have tweeted at him about this comic book before. Yeah. Jim Ross is very nice. Well, that's good. I've eaten at his restaurant at Oklahoma. <laughs> They, oh, that's another wrestler thing that they do. They open restaurants. They do open restaurants. Hulk Hogan's got his beachfront property restaurant. Well, he had, what was it called? Uh, Spaghetti Mania? No. Hulk, Hulk, Hulk Pasta Mania. Pasta Mania, that's it. Which uh, which was the thing. Which Where Kulop worked. Kulop Lysak. From, Did she seriously? Yeah, because she, oh, she's shit. from that area. She's from Minnesota. Oh, from, shit. From uh, Who Charted, uh, the podcast Who Charted, she worked there. Worked at a Pasta Mania? Did she have to dress like Hulk Hogan? No, I think you well, just. I think bad. I think it was just like working at like, you know, like that Wiener Schnitzel, and you wear like an outfit. Oh, okay. But like, I that's don't think, really you know. too bad because you know what uh, Facebook reminded me the other day is that I had once posted a picture of a sexy Hulk Hogan costume that I found. Yeah, you sure did. Uh, and I'm assuming that if you worked at Pasta Mania, you just wore that. Yeah. And if you were a chick, you just had a fake mustache and a short skirt. Yep. <laughs> So basically, okay, so basically we get a lot. I'm going to try to barrel through this here. Yeah. We get a lot of really like in throwing wrestling action. A lot of people doing flying like karate kicks. Oh, yeah. They're calling it drop kicks, but they're doing like. No, these people are like, this, like they're like nine feet out of the ring. Yeah, they're flying they're out of the so ring. They're so far out of the ring. And there's just people getting thrown and i mean basically it's a wrestling match you know although I, although i do i do like it i think it's kind of a funny step by step wrestling match we get we get a bunch of kids saying how a bunch of kids in stinger face paint being like you know looking, love you sting oh love God. you sting but then one kid in the face sting face paint goes no way man diamond studs the best which i'm like why are you wearing the face paint why aren't you just like diamond stud because <laughs> nobody wanted to dress like diamond stud he doesn't wear face paint no so I mean, basically, it's a wrestling match, which is panel by panel. Panel by panel, we get... Uh, El Gigante is getting attacked by, like, 90 men. I mean, people are being thrown into things. I don't even know things. how many people are in this battle royal. Like, n- There's, like, 13. All right. There's like, 13 or whatever. Take, I'm just going to say 90. So, yeah, so let's... Because 90 is close to 13. Yeah, and they're throwing, and then at one point, they take El Gigante, and they throw him over... He has a nice mullet, by he the has way. A, oh, yeah, he's got a nice mullet, and he goes, Gah! Yeah, so he he's out. PN News is wearing his hat in the ring. Fuck him. Yeah. And Vader's. Vader's making fun of him for wearing a hat. Vader, Vader, Vader should make fun for wearing a hat. Uh, they really go in on Johnny B. Bad, by the way. There's a lot of close ups of his face. Yeah, a lot of close ups of his face with different lighting and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, you can see that he's wearing purple eyeshadow. Oh, yeah. It's very lovely. Oh, yeah. It matches you know. his purple outfit, actually. So, you know, he's color coordinated. And so uh, he's throwing people. So people are just getting hammered, uh-huh. you know, and. Uh, and and who pulls his hair? Okay, so yeah, yeah, this is the other thing here. So so Barry Windham pulls his hair. Yeah. Which apparently, again, way more hair than Johnny Bad has. Yeah. Especially in this thing, it's like it's, it's like Mr. Fantastic hair. Oh, it's beautiful. And he's it, Barry Windham pulls his hair, and he goes, "Ow, my hair! Ow. I like it." Yeah, he likes Tutti it. Tutti frutti, oh Rudy, he gets off on it. Yeah, he likes pain. He he's literally cool. gets off right there, and then that's it. And then we don't see anything. We don't see him. You know, like ejaculate on the audience, which or, is good. Yeah, I mean, because then we have these three uh, dudes in trench coats, uh, Dick Tracy or the Question, pick one. Just it's wand- Obsidian, sure, and they just wander in to the ring, and then they pick up the kids and they throw them out of their seats so they can stand ringside. <laughs> so they just stand there, and then Sting is like throwing people out of the ring. 
and they're taking down that rapping guy. And one of the brothers, which gets again, I mean, here's another thing too. Like all of a sudden, CNN News. Oh my god, he got so big. He became like the blob in like three he, panels he, because yeah, he expanded. He's standing, so he's standing next to, um, he's sta- like he's being like he's got like all these wrestlers on top of him. Yeah, and and like, but he, he became he's about gigantic. Fifteen feet tall in this panel. But he wasn't just like last. He was battle. not. Yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't at the beginning. And he starts rapping. Yeah, and, and then he, apparently he's going to win this money and give it to a charity. That's, everybody keeps talking about how they're all going to give money to a charity. I'm yeah, like, they're sure. keeping this fucking money. Yeah. They're like, so then they throw one of the Steiner brothers out, and he like that's going hurt. to that's going to your road expenses at Denny going to the Shonies. Yeah, and so he gets one of the Steiner brothers. I don't know which one. Rick. Rick gets thrown out, and he like kind of twists his ankle. Yes. And so, like, the question... I also want to say here real quick, in the, in the fan, same panel where PN News is gigantic, yeah. Vader has Rick Steiner upside down by his ankles. Yeah, he's, like, shaking him. <laughs> like, shaking him like he's trying to get change out. I would love to see that in real life. That would be a great move. If that was a thing that happened. Anyways, so, Johnny Be Bad... Gets splatted. Gets splatted by Rick St- Scott Steiner. But then Scott's like, oh my god, my brother. Scott Steiner is like 5,000 feet away from Johnny B. Bad here. and he. Uh, but not only that, he just sort of like lands on top of him all like splayed out like a frog. He's that would have like, been... Bleh. That had that actually <laughs> happened in... People would have died? People would, that for, Well, there's a lot of things under people would die. This would be one of them. This is like playing WrestleMania, the arcade game. <laughs> it's like he belly flops onto Johnny B. Bad. <laughs> Body B. Bad just goes, ah! And he just literally just falls on top of him. Like, yeah. He doesn't catch him like when you're bl- supposed to do. Yeah, it's just he, they just, he falls on top of him and he just like fucking belly flops right onto him. And then Scott Snyder's like, oh no, my brother, he's hurt. I have to save him. And I love, this is where, like this book, whatever, it's reading wrestling. He's also standing on the top rope like nobody stands on the top oh, rope. I know. But like he was like say that so wide stance. It's when, weird. When this book came out, yes, was kayfabe still a thing? Oh yeah. Okay. Hundred percent. That makes a lot more sense because I'm just like that. Obviously, it's a work. Like this guy, he's not going to ruin his chance just because his brother's there. Well, but I'm but, sure but, he, but, he, but the but, announcer would be like, "Oh my god, his brother!" Blah blah blah. But none of us actually believe that shit. We know it's all scripted. Here, here's the thing with the Steiner brothers, though, is that it's always been said that. Scott Steiner could have been a bigger star because Scott Steiner, in his heyday, uh, which is around this time, uh-huh. was a stu- just a sick, crazy athlete. Like he he would do things that you just be like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, I you've never seen it. It's just he's, he's so awesome. Mm-hmm. And Rick would be kind of like Rick was not the one he was. He was still act, Rick was still awesome, but he wasn't as. But good. Rick was always kind of going to be the the. Rick was always going to be the tag team guy. Yeah. Rick Scott was to be the one that had the singles potential. But a lot of times they would try to give him the title or try to you know program him with flair and make him you know make him successful, you know make him like a bigger single star and he would always kind of turn it down so he could just keep you know keep his brother you know in the mix. Okay. So it kind of it kind it's kind of funny cuz this kind of would be something that you would, you know, in the dirt sheets to be like, you know, Dave Meltzer would be like, oh, uh-huh, okay, we'll write that down. So, <laughs> so, so he disqualifies himself to go help his brother. Right. He disqualifies his brother. And then uh, I don't even know who the fuck that guy is. I'm like, where'd that guy come from who? with the glasses? That's Simon Stud. He was wearing glasses earlier. You oh, just can't really see. Sh- okay. Yeah. It just looks like he has like black circles for eyes. Yeah. Well, here's my favorite part here is for some reason, Sting puts, because uh, like he's, you know, he's, they're, they're 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 talking about because uh, so every time somebody gets knocked out, these guys at the ringside are like, "Ha ha, what about your losers?" Yeah, you know, and these guys are like, you know, the wrestlers are always like, "Hey, fuck you, whatever," you know. And so we get this shot of Sting chin chin locking Rick uh, Arn Anderson, uh-huh. and for some reason, I don't know. I think I'm assuming this is Missy saying, "Ew, Sting is touching Arn Anderson." I, it must be right. Like, who? I don't know. I didn't understand that either. I'm like, Which what the for, fuck is that? Well, first of all, why is that ew? Because first of all, that's all they're doing is touching each other. Yeah, and that, Arn Anderson is not like he's you know, not like one of those like nasty grody dudes. No, he's not like it's not like if he was like ew, she's touching he's touching Bray Wyatt or something or yeah, no, Bray Wyatt's <laughs> gross. You know, or some you know gross wrestler. You know, 
you know, whatever. I mean, I could insert your gross wrestler here. Uh, yeah. Bastion Booger. There's a bunch of them. Yeah. So she, yeah, but she's like, yeah, he's saying that. And I'm like, what the fuck? This doesn't make any sense. So anyways, um, and then Ron Simmons starts going to town on people. He literally does a flying one-footed drop kick and knocks, like, Everybody out of the ring. <laughs> he eliminated like Arn Anderson like and Bader and 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 uh, Dustin Rhodes. They all got knocked out because they're, they're all, all out. Yeah, they all knocked about with one flying drop kick. Which what a bunch of horse shit. Yeah, sure. Because um, again, this is like the crazy shit where like they're all sort of superheroes. Yeah, and so there's a bunch of that. And then, okay, here's what's so, so Vader gets eliminated, and as he gets up, he looks at the guys in the hats and the you know, jackets, and he goes, hey, don't I know you? And somebody's like, unlikely, since I've never been to seven to a 7-Eleven. Okay. <laughs> Which I'm supposed to assume that the joke is, is that Vader works at 7-Eleven to make ends meet. Yeah. So this guy would never go to a 7-Eleven. What? Vader was making a lot of money in Japan too. Oh yeah, yeah. He had to work. Yo, he was big. That's why he's Vader. Because basically in Japan, they were like, "You're gonna be this character Vader, and we're gonna give you like a a, 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 a helmet that spouts smoke." Oh okay. Vader Vader's '90s entrance was badass, and uh, yeah, this is he, he he's he's I'm insulted for Vader here. <laughs> Anyways, so. <laughs> Diamond Stud picks up PN News. Who is, again, normal size. Now he's normal size, but he's still 300 pounds. He's still well, yeah, a gigantic. He's, he's a fat guy. And that, he's still a big fat guy, and he picks uh, him up over his head. Well, you know, we've all seen John Cena do that to the fucking... Well, not over his head, but he fucking picks up the big show. The big show's got to weigh, like... Right, but Diamond God Stud is doing, like, full extension. No, he really is. It's He's, like, uh, like, uh, like doing a deadlift... At, a, at the Olympics, yeah, and he's throwing. He throws him out over the over the top rope, and as he's doing, PM PM News is rapping. Of course, he is because that's rapping. all he he can only talk in rap. Yes, that's the only thing he can do. He's kind of like Death's Head, where he only talks in questions. Yes, 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 yes. So finally, so there goes Johnny B. Bad. Yeah, so finally Johnny B. Bad gets his. Because he's Johnny, out. Because Ron Simmons, he's, he's saved himself like eight times at this point. You're like, get just get the fuck out of the ring. Oh no, no, he's not out. He's still saved. Still, he's, he, keeps, he keeps hanging on. Uh, Johnny B. Bad's not out. Johnny B. Bad is getting 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 a hard push here. Yeah, and they're just throwing dudes into each other. There's, you know, what does Sting do here? At the- so now we have. So now we basically it's Ron Simmons and Sting, Diamond Stud and Johnny B. Bad. Yeah, and they start pounding, you know, stomping on these guys. Yeah. You know, uh, and all that stuff. And then Ron Simmons gets his shit together. Yeah. And but Sting is like laying on the mat and he grabs something. Sting, Sting is laying on the mat and somehow. Sting somehow gets, he throws a guy over the top rope. He gets up when behind. He's laying on him. He gets up behind Diamond Stud and he gets him stinger sized. That's what he says. Okay. And he picks him. I think what he does is he picks him up by the ankles and flips him over. Sure. But he looks like he's laying down. So that would kind of be impossible. And he's like, stud, you're a dud. And everybody's like, stud's a dud. dud. Yeah, Except for that cool. one kid in the stink face paint who loves diamond stud. And he's crying now. He is crying. Yeah. We already got his seat removed because those guys. Oh, yeah, that's them. right. He got thrown into I like. I thought that was going to be like a child abduction thing. I thought it was like, I oh, thought, this is. Okay. Well, we'll talk about what happens with these guys. But I thought it was going to be so much more important than it ended up being. Because uh, we see these dudes come in and they don't matter. So I mean, they they do for the match, but they don't for anything else. So anyway, so now Sting and Johnny B. Bad. There's a lot. Okay, I'm gonna say this real quick. There's a lot of dialogue in here. Right? There's just so <laughs> these guys are much talking of it. way too much during a wrestling this, match. If this were Botchamania, this would be under the everybody talks too much <laughs> everybody part. Everybody talks too much because they're just they won't shut the fuck up. I feel like I should like just take a picture of like this whole page and just and just send that it. to Matthew. Yeah, do it. just tweet it at him. Just and be just, like, here you go, dude. Everybody, everybody talks, talks, too, talks much. too much. So Sting gets Sting gets actually he dives at Johnny B. Bad and gets falls out, which uh, yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. I'm going to say, you know, the, if there's one thing this book is doing right, it's creating new stars. Something that the <laughs> WWE does not know how to do. Officially, this this is so a like, well who, Who's this, our new star? John Cena? Okay, we'll go with him. If okay. John Cena was in this book, John Cena would win. 
<laughs> I don't care who it is. You could it could have been five hundred pound fat muscly men in the entirety of John Cena. They could all have laid on top of him. He still would have won. Well, yeah, it's John Cena. He always wins. So now we're doing a backbreaker on Johnny B. Bad. So so yeah, Johnny B. Bad. So so Ron Simmons picks up Johnny B. Bad in a gorilla press, but he's the opposite facing the opposite way, like he's facing upward. Yeah. And he just drops him down on his knee, which that's like one of those wrestling moves you see in like the video games or like the smash breaker or whatever. Yeah. So he does that. And he then like basically he does what Bane does to Batman. Oh, yeah, he, that's right. Yeah, that's exactly. exactly what he does. And he does it. And then I don't know what happens because well, he doesn't throw him because, out. Yeah, exactly. Because they're like, oh, disqualification, like pinning, all that sort of stuff doesn't matter. He has to be thrown out of the ring. But he just disappears. Well, it says he's tossed him over the top. Okay. But then you see his body here anyways. Yeah. Like I think because he killed him. Yeah, I think he's dead. Well, there's he's actual not, death in this book. Well, he's not the only one to die. Right. So now there's all there's a trophy like right between his legs. Yeah. And the that, trophy's already there. Yeah. Just well, like, John V. Bad is laying there dying. Yes, John V. Bad's dead, and they're like, "Here's a trophy," and that's when um, Lex Luger, who was the guy in the trench coat. Now there were three guys in the trench coat. By well, the way, Luger had people. He had Friends. an entourage. Oh, okay. So the, the other two guys could have been Harley Race. And uh, Mr. Hughes. Okay. And sure. obviously Lex Luger, but they probably didn't want to draw Lex Luger or Harley Race and Mr. Hughes because there was no reason to. Right. So. So Lex Luger like takes his trench coat off and he jumps in the ring and he's like, I win. And he hits the the guy over the head with the trophy. Yeah, he jumps in the ring. He's he's he's. Re- it's funny because he's removing this jacket for like three hours. Yeah, because it's a you know he's got to, he's taking the jacket off as he's running over the railing. He's taking the jacket off as he's getting in the ring. Yeah, and then the ring which the the trophy which was underneath the the, the crotch of Ron Simmons. Yeah, is now being left is now left unattended, and he gets and he hits him upside the head with hits it. him upside the head, Luger or hits Luger hits him Simmons upside the head. And then he does. And he sets it down very carefully, mm-hmm. so it's standing up. And then he he picks up Ron Simmons and he smashes his head into it. He gives him a pile driver. So I'm assuming that, that the pile driver, which was actually at the time, was called the attitude adjustment. Oh, I see. Which is John Cena's book. Well, I would assume that this trophy just went square through the top of his head. Oh, it should have. It should 100. percent this trophy should have impaled him like a fucking Jason it Voorhees have, It should have been like putting a hole in an egg. Yeah. Putting yeah. a pinhole in a fucking egg. It should it should have <laughs> went through what, what what should have happened was he gave him the pile driver and John Sim, Ron Simmons would have his head the the majority of the trophy would have went through his skull into his brain. And his brain would have exploded head would have exploded and he would be dead. And it would be like a pumpkin. Yeah. If, the, if this trophy is, I mean, the trophy is apparently made out of balsa wood. Ooh, yeah, it, in this it, case, it just it's made out of those. You know what they like? What they use to make uh, bottles on TV shows that break? It's that it's like made sugar out of candy glass. glass. Yeah, yeah, sugar glass. Yeah. That's basically because that's the only reason he does it not shatters. have fucking metal punched through the top of his skull. It shatters, and Jim Ross is you know we get to these because we got all these boxes you know the commentating the action throughout. So here's. Oh, good. What irritates me about the fact that they brought in these guys in the trench coats? Because I thought this was going to be like some sort of like we're with a government agency. We're yeah, that would have been interesting, like wouldn't it? Further the plot of this book. Like this is now this is the inciting incident of like it's just it's the first a re- issue. yeah, it's a regular yeah. wrestling match. It's no big deal, whatever. But now we have these three dudes who need these wrestlers' help to do something. Yeah. And no, that's not what this is at all. This is just a fucking wrestling gimmick. And now the end. Like, there wouldn't that have been a better story? Yeah. No, it would have. No, no, we're not going to have any of that. So, so the, he, so he, he, he piled a trophy. Jim Ross is like, by God, his neck is broken. <laughs> Simmons' neck baby broke. Was like the next issue of this book should be Ron Simmons' funeral. Yeah, it should be like Apollo Creed. And they should be like being in a funeral. And Sting being like, you know, Sting being like, like it Sting should be Rocky. And Ivan Drago should be Lex Luger. Yeah, and that should be the rest of this twelve issues. And they and they would be like, we couldn't find a coffin. Long, we had to get the extra long coffin because the trophy can't. It's still stuck in his brain. 
It's a closed coffin. It's obviously a closed coffin ceremony. We had to get the extra long one, so the we had to make a paper mache head to fit over his real head, <laughs> so we could do it. We open got a coffin. comic book mask, luckily, to like cover it up. It's just sort of lumpy. <laughs> We're gonna use Vader's mask. It's just a little lumpy up top. And it's funny because he not only does he break the trophy, but he also apparently rips up the charity check, which I don't know why they gave it to him because I, I didn't see him get it at all. I don't get, know. get it at all after he won. Like nobody no. handed him a check. No, no. So he just ripped up the check, which you could just write another check. Well, of course. You know, <laughs> WCW just write another There's check. only one check. <laughs> and once it is ripped up, there is no more check. And then, so he's walking away, you know. Um, and what's her face tries to talk to him. What are these guys? And her hair's g- on the other side now, by the way. Wait, what's going on here? So. Are those his dudes? Who are these dudes? Are they carrying away. A body? A body? I don't know. But it looks like they're carrying away a stretcher with nothing on it? I don't know. I'm really confused here. I don't know what's going on over there. Hang on. Now Luger's henchmen are breaking out a stretcher. Simmons is going to need it. Oh, so they're going to put him on a stretcher? Oh, wait. So are they going to take him back in a stretcher and then like... Beat him up? Are they going to replace his head with something else because they broke his own other head? Yes. That's what's going to happen. I'd be funny if they just put like the remainder of the trophy on the stretcher. <laughs> It's just the trophy. And just walked out They with leave it. him over on the floor and they just put pieces of the trophy and walk away. Where did they get the stretcher? I guess. I have no idea. I don't know. It's probably under the ring. Maybe it was ringside. Maybe it was it ringside. had to have been under the ring. Where else would it have been? It's always under the ring. Yes. So anyway, so it's funny because he's walking away and uh, Busy Hyatt's like, hey, champ, how about an interview with a beautiful lady? And he's like, sure, do you know any? Yeah. Slam. Yeah, and her hair's dry. Guys, I'm just going to say this. Missy Hyatt... Uh, Quit WCW over a sexual harassment lawsuit in 1993. Yeah, I'm surprised she didn't read this and quit sooner, because <laughs> that's that's kind of still. I mean, it's not as bad no. as, as to what actually happened to her. No, it's okay. They'll just do. Do you want to know what happened to her? Uh, I'm certain she said people were harassing her, and they said no, she's not, and eventually she quit well, because her suit mm, probably got like fucked or something. No, I'll tell you what happened. Mm. So. Uh, she was in a match. She used to manage the Nasty Boys. Okay. And she used to wear, like, leather, like, outfits and stuff. Okay. And she was in a match against... It was, she was managing the Nasty Boys against Sting and Hawk mm-hmm. at Halloween... At Starcade 93, I think. Starcade. And she... There's a part where she came in the ring and Sting, uh, like, had to grab her to, like, restrain her and she came out of her top. Uh-huh. Right? So, WCW being classy, somebody took a picture of that moment, mm-hmm. that exact moment, and she's not exactly the most favorite person in the locker room. Well, you know, not that that matters. Not that that matters, but I'm saying, but you know, she had her detractors uh-huh. in the company because the, those classy people blew up that photo of her boob coming out and put it in the Atlanta offices yeah. of WCW. Yeah. And she saw that and she was like... Yeah, because that's bullshit. You fucking assholes. Yeah. So good on Missy. Yeah. You know, for sticking that shit to the man. Because she's never been back, too. No. She's never... She, she only showed up like ECW like shortly after that for like a little bit and she never... I, I, I She just did like indie stuff. Yeah. So... Fuck those guys. Yeah. But but just FYI, they draw her hair on the opposite side. <laughs> and they, uh, it's very important that I point that out. It, 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 yes, it's true. Wait a minute. Are you sure? Yes. Her hair is all over the place. It's sometimes it's in the middle. <laughs> I think it gradually shifts it gradually from the right shifted. to the left. Because there's a one where it looks like it's in the middle. Yeah. And I'm like, did it just, is it like a. It's real. It's, it's is her hair it. alive? Yes, it is. It's just oh, moving. Man. It's crawling off the side of her head. It just goes back and forth. So Luger's like, y'all y'all suck. Boo. Um, I win. Yeah. I guess. And he told everybody to send his get well cards uh, with this tip of like Luger looks Luger. Uh, you gotta have to get up pretty early to put over the. Put it over the on the toilet package, because Lex Luger always has an angle. Boo, boo. The next issue is just simply heel. Yeah. Which maybe I'd be great if it's just the next issue was just a cover on the cover is just a shoe. Yeah. With an arrow pointing to the heel. And it says, will this shoe be used? <laughs> Probably. Which, you I know what? Maybe that's it. Maybe it's just like a match where all they do is they have to beat each other with shoes. I'm surprised that hasn't been done yet. That's been, I think, I feel like. 
There had, you know what? There's, there's not. We're a, gonna have a shoe. WCW match. had some shoe action going on in the early late nineties. I'm surprised they didn't give it to the women, where they just hit each other well, with high heels. Well, I'm gonna say this much: WCW back in the back when Hogan in '95, when Nitro first was on, he lost a number of ma- Hulk Hogan lost a number of matches due to women's shoes being used in his eye because he because the back then it would be like Flair would bring like Elizabeth and. Uh, you know, woman, you know, and he, <laughs> like woman, woman, like Chris Benoit's wife, ex-wife, you know, R.I.P. Woman. What was her name? Woman. Woman. What? Her name was woman. No. Yeah. What? Because she was like she she originally was named Robin Green, and she was kind of like the nerdy girlfriend for Scott Stein, Rick Steiner, and she was like became like more of a vamp, and then she like uh, d- turned on Rick Steiner and brought in Doom, which also featured Ron Simmons under a mask, and then she became woman. And her, she had a bodyguard named Nitron, who, whose real name is name is the guy. It was played by actor Tyler Maine, who went on to play Sabretooth in the X Men movies, oh. in the original X Men movies. That's very good information. That I'm so glad I know that. <laughs> I, I am giving so much information, <laughs> you guys. Really are. This is the longest episode, but it is so informative. Well, here's the thing: I don't think we've ever given so many facts on this show. <laughs> Usually we don't. We're just like. Bleh, I like that these are some of these are actual facts. These are actual facts. <laughs> so proud. These are actual facts, like dates and things and names and things you could check up on <laughs> in real life. I told you have to do with comic books and hypotheses. Ugh, it's so weird to put real people into a comic book instead of fictional characters. Well, that's it for this one. It's fan fiction. Th- this is essentially fan fiction. It's all it is. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of like it. Oh, I know. You love it. You're looking for the rest of this run. Uh, WCW World Championship Wrestling, number one, from April 1992. Would you read the next issue of no. this? No. Okay. Nope. I am. Nope. I'm, I'm, if, you, if you could, I, I will punt this down I know you in, the, will. in the shitty we, bins. We will find the rest of this, and that's fine. It's just, for me, watching wrestling is one thing. Literally reading a play-by-play of wrestling is another. <laughs> I'm just like, wow. It's like, it would be like reading... About like football, instead of just like watching football, you'd just be like. So I guess that means we're not gonna do NFL Super Pro. <laughs> if we fight an NFL Super Pro, we'll do an NFL Super. Pro. I don't know if I want to do an NFL Super Pro. <laughs> I can't. I've never seen one, so I can't imagine. No, it's we'll good. If, one. We'll, if, if we if you do, don't tell me because I don't want to do it. <laughs> okay. Don't be like if you see it and be like, "Will Sean want this?" and just think no. Or because I think I would be I'd be much more bored. Yeah. Yeah. That's just my take on it. All right. Well, we'll try to find the rest of this run for you. Because <laughs> God knows they're not going to collect it. Oh, God, no. No. There's no reason to do it except for me. Marvel Comics doesn't even want to <coughs> pretend this exists. The only two the only two people that would care about this is me and Ron Funches. Yeah, that's probably true. Ron Funches, I bet, has the whole run. Ron Funches probably has all of it. I feel like I should, if I ever meet Ron Funches. You have to ask him. I have many questions to ask him. This would be one of them. He's like, you own this entire comic book series. That's the thing. You know what? If you met Ron Funches, the only thing you'd want to talk to him about is wrestling. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. I, I've seen him do comedy, and I can't tell you a single joke he's done. Yeah. Not that he's not a good comedian. I just no, he's I, a good, I am he's more fascinated funny. by him. It's just you really want to talk to him about wrestling. Well, there's a few other guys in wrestling. Like Judah My, Friedlander? Uh, Judah Friedlander, Mike Lawrence. Um... There's a few other cats too. I bet I you'd be Hal friend- Lublin, who actually they host a he hosts a great co- uh, wrestling podcast called Tights and Fights. Yeah, uh, on Max Fun, and uh, he's actually kind of my new rest- my new wrestling podcaster crush, man. Well, buddy. you know <laughs> the one of the girls from My Favorite Murder. Her husband has a wrestling podcast. Where Vince yep. Vince Avril does. Yeah, he's actually, cool. you would like this Tights and Fights because it's um, so it's Hal, it's uh, this rapper named Open Mike Eagle and there's this girl named Danielle mm-hmm. who's a comedian I forgot her I'm blanking on her last name Danielle Radford and she watches all the wrestling but she has like really like, it's kind of like if you if you had good really solid opinions <laughs> if about you wrestling, had thoughts if you had wrestling <laughs> thoughts I mean not just like you know like I have thoughts on wrestling it's just that they're not grounded in any sort of fact right but she's like full of fact and oh, it's yeah, like no. it, but she's got your kind of fire <laughs> so I kind of that's why I think I like it as I think it's like it's like it's, it's like if me if me Ron Funches and you all had a wrestling podcast oh god it would kind of be like this but oh. with different people all right, but actors well. playing us <laughs> 
<laughs> it's pretty. I like it. So yeah, but, I think you'd like you'd you'd be friends with Freddie Prince Jr. Yeah, I'd probably get along with Freddie Prince because he did a lot Jr. of yeah. the E stuff there for a while. I know, now. but I would probably be. Like, he's probably he's too cool. Well, he's too cool to be. He's too. He's, he used to write like he's got the Undertaker's phone number. Undertaker's like texting him and shit about like yeah, having a baby, you know, because Freddie Prince had a baby and he, Undertaker texted him and it was like, "Yo, given life, I'm the Undertaker." What you about know? what about uh, Billy Corgan? Uh, I don't know. Billy Corgan's got a lot of problems right now. Well, yeah, TNA is like imploding. If TNA is imploding. He's got some issues. I don't know if I want to bug him right now talking about wrestling. But he does love wrestling. He does love wrestling. He might actually enjoy have this comic book. Oh, I bet he. I. I'm sure he. Has People who have this comic book. book: me, Ron Funches, Judah Friedlander, Judy Friedlander, <laughs> Billy Corgan. Uh, that's about it. Yeah, that's nobody it. else. Yeah, John Stewart probably has his comic book. John Stewart loves wrestling. John Stewart's a big fucking nerd, and I love him. Yeah, no, he is a total fucking mark. Fucking wrestling asshole. He really, really is. I bet he has all of these comic books, and I bet he would just. I bet he listens to all the wrestling podcasts. And he probably tells while his he son. Like goes around. He and probably feeds tells his animals. son about these books. I'm sure he does. And his son is just like, I've had enough. Yeah, he can probably. We just, can, we, can we just go to the actual wrestling event? He's like, No, I want to tell you about the Z Man. <laughs> well, he's probably like, All right, well, I, I have a farm for injured animals. So I gotta go feed them all. I'm just gonna like put on my wrestling podcast and like walk around the farm feeding my Cole animals. Cole Bear is into wrestling too. I always thought he was more of like a sci-fi guy. He is a sci-fi guy, but he also I think he's got a he's got a wrestle, he's got a wrestling thing in him because he grew up in the Carolinas. So oh. he's he's down with the w, with the NWA. <laughs> we we are mighty. I, I there's we more. Are. Here's the thing. I didn't realize there were so many fucking wrestling fans. <laughs> Like super devoted wrestling fans. Yes. He, there's a lot of you motherfuckers. <sighs> yes, there is. Yeah. I, I'm now now I'm getting fired up to do that podcast. I want to do the wrestling podcast. Is it just you talking wrestling? Well, I want to talk about wrestling magazines. I talk about the original fanfic. <laughs> the man fic. Oh, you know what sucks? I you know, you threw away all those like flyer wrestling flyer things. What? Do you remember we were like cleaning out your mom's house and you had all those like you subscribed to some wrestling newsletter when you were a kid? Oh yeah, but they, that those are but that that's just like print stuff. That's just like actual facts or rumors. Yeah. I don't want to read that. <laughs> you want to read wrestling magazines. I want to read this is I'm talking about this thing. The wrestling magazines that's actual men being like <laughs> Or women. There were some women doing it. I'm sure there are some women who. One were of them, huge I remember. One marks. of them went on to write out right for ESPN because some of them they went, you know, did, made the jump. Yeah. They go from wrestling to actual sports. Yeah. Not that wrestling isn't. Well, didn't Dave athletic. Meltzer it's, kind of do that for a while? Dave Meltzer. Back. Dave Meltzer, you know, wrote a lot about wrestling, but he's also he's kind of a legit. He's basically he's fighting. Well, he's yeah. a legit MMA person. Yeah. He's legit. You know, he, he's talked about sports. He knows. I mean, you know. He's not like Brian Alvarez, who doesn't know anything other than just sports, uh, wrestling, wrestling, and MMA. Yeah. You know, like Brian Alvarez. Oh, the band aid, you know. <laughs> I love you, Brian Alvarez, but fucking listen to the radio sometime. <laughs> or do something. God. I mean, Vinny, Vinny, Vin, Vinny on his show, he's a football guy. Yeah. He knows everything about football. Brian knows nothing. Brian only knows about wrestling and cats, which, you know yeah. what? Well, not enough. a bad life. That's actually kind of like listening to uh, my RuPaul's Drag Race podcast that I love so much. One of the guys on there, Daniel, he doesn't seem to get any movie references. He has a lot of really weird, obscure references, but like any movie references that they throw out, he just does not understand. And the other guys on the podcast like lose their fucking shit. Like the I, other day, I, as they should. He didn't under. He had no idea who T Boz from TLC was. That's weird. And everybody was like, what the fuck are you talking well, about? How old you? is he? Like 10? Oh, my God. He's older than we are. No, he's not. Yes, he is. By like two or three. Well, maybe by like four or five years. Yeah. See, that's excusable. You should at least that's know. That's the thing. Because they were like. You got to at least know what TLC he, is. That's even what uh, what Taylor said to him. He's like, you were tending bar when they played those videos on loop constantly. You cannot tell me you do not recognize t Boz. He had no idea. And he hosts a drag queen podcast. Right? Yeah, so everybody's like losing their shit because they're like, "Will you watch a movie? Will you fucking listen no, to you should listen sh- to you, the radio?" You should shame him. <laughs> they did. <laughs> good, good. So yeah, it's like the only thing he knows about is like really obscure shit and drag queens. It's very strange. <laughs> well, good on him. Yeah, 
Well, this has it's been still a, a really great podcast, though. <laughs> no, we're talking about some good podcasts here, guys. <laughs> we're talking about a lot of good things. We're, we're dropping a lot of knowledge this week. I don't care if this show is going to be almost two hours oh, long. Yeah, you know what? If the Gilmore guys can make three-hour podcasts and make people fucking sit there in a theater and listen to them, we can do a two-hour podcast in our living room. Oh, I thought this was entertaining. I'm always entertained by us. <laughs> so, you know. Well, hopefully if you stuck it out. <laughs> Good on you. Yeah, if you thanks. have any re- Halloween recommendations for me and my brother, yeah, let I me really know. I think you guys should do a wrestler thing. Like, like you really should. I'm going to go with PN get, News. I, re- <laughs> I really want to get you like some tights. I'm going to go shit. with the white PN News. You just walk around rapping. I think I should go with the white PN News. But I got to get that kind of... I kind of like, can we can find a hat like I'm that? too tall, though. I'm not fat. I'm not as big as him. Yeah, I still think that we should just get you like some shiny tights. And some underwear and like a t-shirt. And you and Brian should be some tra- a tag team. I gotta be something that people recognize, though. Well, I'm, I also think that you guys could be the Danzigs. The <laughs> Danzigs. I think Brian could it's be. Da- my God, it's Danzig one and Danzig two. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, Brian could be Danzig from the mother video, and you could be Misfit Danzig. It's a dirty black summer of pain. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. I really do. I think I'm <laughs> seriously tempted to go post on his wall to be like, "What are you guys doing? It has to be like a, like a, a tag." Brian team doesn't want to do a tag. Oh team my god! Thing with uh, me. You know what? If I said Brian, you want to do a tag team costume? You know, you, could, you test those waters. <laughs> I think Brian would be into it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to. He just wants to get I'm, here and have a good time. He doesn't, want to be forced, he doesn't want to be forced into cosplay with his stupid brother. I think he'd be up for it. <laughs> I really do. I think he'd think it was funny as shit. I'll leave him alone. <laughs> Are you afraid that he's going to say yes? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to ask him. <laughs> anyway we should end the show yeah we probably should uh thanks for listening folks uh we'll be back next week with our uh I hope maybe a shorter show probably Meh. but fun comics <laughs> next week's gonna be our halloween show yeah but... oh and by the way real quick i just want to say thank you everybody uh that's been supporting us for a hundred episodes oh my gosh i know we're over i think we're over 100 episodes at this point we are um i didn't really like, I'm, I'm almost hun- pretty sure that we've we, we've we've crossed that threshold um but thank you for listening and thank you for supporting the show uh and as always tell a friend if they haven't if you if you like comic books if you like shitty comic books if you like dumb jokes about wrestling and goth and dance queens yeah. and drag queens and stuff like that and gilmore girls whatever yeah this is the podcast for you um <laughs> give us it you know, really is and if you can support us on itunes please give us a five-star review if you think we deserve it uh it really it really helps us up in uh visibility in terms of like that and uh yeah and you can find uh all of our shows on sideshownetwork.tv that's the network we're with so you should check them out too and of course i'm on twitter at angry hero sean s-h-a-w-n is how you spell sean my instagram is the same and the angry hero.tumblr.com. And I'm at Jen Stansfield on Twitter and Instagram, jenstansfield.tumblr.com and jenstansfield.wordpress.com. All right, thanks for listening, folks, and we will see you again next week. Bye. Hi, I'm Andrew Steven, and you probably don't know me, but I host a show about comedy, the internet, and television. It uses NBC's new streaming comedy channel, CISO, as a jumping off point to tell stories like Looking for Bill Murray. The path eventually led to Bill's youngest brother, Joel. Someone knew Joel. That's me. I've always been a boxer's guy. And Billy. My brother Ed, who was the oldest. My brother Brian. Prank calling Steve Martin. But the best thing that we would ever do is we had a two-line phone system in our house. So we would dial one number, like we would dial Steve Martin, then we'd dial Martin Short, and then we'd conference call and take ourselves out of it, and they would both be like, Oh, what's up, Steve? What's up, Martin? Plus, the UCB's Matt Besser sings, Cannabis oils butter wax and shatter. Kulop Vlasak talks about how she created bajillion dollar properties. It was going to be two female uh, real estate brokers, and we were going to call it two broker girls. <laughs> 
And Dan Harmon teaches me how to write a story. Like with only a couple of lies, you can make a hero out of out of out of a villain. So if you like comedy, you watch CISO, or you just like interesting stories, be sure to subscribe to the CISO C Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you listen to podcasts.